Hello, and welcome to... What, what, what are you laughing about? Nothing. Is it that, that loud spike from last no, week? Not. Yeah. Do, you do you. I was very aware of what I did last week. I'm not it's proud up, about it. It was up there. Yeah. I apologize to all your ears. If you can could, you could still hear this week and your ears aren't bleeding from last week's intro. You, um, you, you're doing good. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to a... Uh, a better sounding episode, at least to start off with, of uh, Talking Snacks, a gaming podcast. This is episode, what, 21? 20. No, last week was 20. It's 21. Is it 21? Yeah. So I got the notes for 20 right there, if my mouse will ever get on there. But yeah, see, there's 20. Oh, hi. Okay, yep. 21. Yep. You can buy cigarettes now. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Good job, episode. We're yeah, proud of you. Yeah, way to go. Um, yeah. Hey, there's, I, no, I, there's no TV in the background. What do you mean? In the background, there's no, there's no TV going on, or dogs running around. It's weird. Yeah, we moved the date. We, we didn't mean to do this on a Wednesday, but I had a, a long weekend. We'll get into what I did and all that good jazz. But yeah, uh, this should be our new time. We'll be on a Tuesday. It should be a lot quieter around us. A better <clears throat> recording environment, if you will. Should I get some like some pads? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, yeah Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. 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 We're going. We're going ham. I mean. We could use the pad to replace the holes in the wall. There you go. Yeah. If you start with a door. Yeah, and we'll put them. We'll just put them up for the door. Sounds good. That'll just be a door. Yeah. You start to fight through pads, like some kind of play place McDonald's attraction or something. It'll be great. Make a whole day of it. <laughs> it's not expensive. I've looked it up. It's a pretty sound idea. There we go. That's the attitude we need. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so uh, quieter and less less noise in the background. It's what we're aiming for. Um, how do we do this? I forget. Oh, wait. Cuff, how's your week been? Uh, Kobe Bryant is no longer with us. Did you have this planned? No. Because this came right out. No. Okay. Kobe Bryant's no longer with us, and it's a, been a very sad week for basketball fans, NBA fans throughout. Um, one of the greatest players of all time. Definitely up there with the the big name basketball players. I don't remember how many rings he, he had. I think I, I think it was like seven. I'm just going off the top of my memory, but our oh I don't know about I can't speak for Roger, but my thoughts and prayers go out to the Bryant family, and maybe they can find a way to move past this and find some condolences and and all that good stuff. So yeah, um, and to the other people in the helicopter. As well. Fuck know. them. Yeah, fuck them. Um, that's crazy. That is crazy. It uh, just randomly started trending over the weekend, and I don't know. I feel like news comes out way too fucking fast. Like, TMZ had that shit up, like, within an hour, I feel like. Yeah, I didn't even believe it at first, too. I didn't either, because, because like, I was like, this is way too soon. How the hell do they know? Because I was, like, I was asleep when it happened, or when the news of it dropped, and, like, my dad literally barged into my room and was like, Kobe Bryant's dead. He died in a helicopter crash. And I'm like, and that's sort of laissez fair, fucking weird waking up state. Like, what? What? That's not real. That can't be real. Sure enough. Did you and see the footage? No, do they have footage? That's awful. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's out there. Dang. If the one I watched was real, it was crazy. Mm. This one started recording right when, like, a helicopter was just, like, tumbling. That sucks. Yep. Big, big explosion. It was kind of almost Grand Theft Auto like. I mean, it's life in video games, but man, I didn't expect like ground explosion like that. It seems more movie esque, Michael Bay shit, but well, damn, of, if that motherfucker didn't. There's a lot of fuel and stuff in there, so. Yeah. Well, hopefully he is hitting triple doubles in heaven now. I don't know what his daughter had going on, but hopefully she's doing good things, too. I thought she was doing some basketball stuff, too. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not up to date on the sports balls on really anything. I'm not really either, but uh, I know Kobe Bryant was a phenomenal player. And that sucks when something like that happens. Good trash talker. Was he? Yeah. Like I said, I good, no in, good in the sense of, like, he could back it up. You know what I mean? From what I've heard, anyway. Uh, kind of up there with like the the Larry Bird category, like they know they're good, so they can get away with tra- talking trash, as opposed to like you know someone who talks trash and then gets 
showing up or whatever, like your Dwayne Wade's or all that good stuff. But anyway, I'm gonna throw this out there because Wyatt hit me with some crazy, some crazy ass conspiracy stuff. Oh boy, yeah. Um, he told me that Hulu had the life and death of Kobe Bryant the day after he died on Hulu. Is that facts? I don't know. He told me this. So, okay. I don't know if we want to fact check that or not, but I don't know why Wyatt would just call me and tell me something absolutely false. I don't know. Do you get you go into your week and I'll, I'll fact check that. Um. Well, let's let's start with some uplifting news. My Chemical Romance announced today a full North American tour. Hype. Do they have locations yet? Georgia. Oh, this is what to us. When? I think it's September. Is it sold out already? That's what I thought. But uh, we looked up the tickets and I think they were about 130 bucks a piece. And it's or... at a, it's a festival in Georgia. Interesting. Yeah, you know, when you say festival, I hate going to see a single artist at a festival. It's just yeah, because they play what like four or five songs. I, yeah, I don't know what they're gonna. Well, I would assume if MCR is doing a reunion tour at a festival, they'll probably give them quite a bit <laughs> of stage time. Yeah, yeah, I would hope so. But me and Kim crunched some numbers, and uh, we was looking at probably like three hundred bucks for me and her both tickets. And if we drive to Georgia and stay at a hotel that night, you know, we're looking for two people at least five hundred bucks at least. So if you would be interested, you know, add another. I'd say at least 200 bucks onto that for your ticket and just gas and amenities. and. I would absolutely do an MCR thing. Kobe Bryant, The Death of a Legend, is on Hulu. Yeah, he said it came up the next day, which was wild. It even just, even within says, a week is a... It just says, wow. Air date, January 26th. When did he die? I mean, I, I thought it was the 26th. That's ridiculous. That's wild, actually. Does somebody just have that stuff backlogged, like, ready to go? Like, Yeah, famous people just have countless amounts of movies yeah, and footage ready have, for just, their they death. They just have editors on standby, just like, all right, who's up, who's up, on the, who's top tier famous right now? Let's let's go ahead and make a documentary just in case, like they did with Temptation and Mac Miller, like... Just have a whole bunch of their stuff just on the side, just just re- in case they bite the big one. I know when Temptation died, like the next day they released a music video called "Sad," and it was it was him fighting himself in a yeah, casket. Like, like that was what? Come on, it was a little bit too obvious. I don't know. I don't know how conspiracy theories work, but shit like that's crazy. But the MCR thing, I'd love to go. Um, we'll see what taxes do. You know. I'd like, to, I'd like to know some more deets on it um, as well, because I'm not too hype on festivals as well. Yeah. I don't know. The, I think the closest locations was like uh, New Jersey, Georgia, or Florida. That's all we got. God damn. That's fucking, North Carolina <laughs> sucks. In terms of like concerts. We get just shit. Yeah. I but I can't say that. We got to see Tyler. That was hype. Did you see him at the Grammys? Mm-mm. Yeah, he put on a damn good performance of uh, Magic Wand and Earthquake. Had a bunch of doppelgangers up there. It looked exactly like him, you know, for the most part. And they were all doing his weird this Tyler crazy, crazy dance. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it's choreographed very well because it looked like a backdrop. It almost looked like a video behind him, but it was actually just like a well placed, just I guess lighting or something, because they came out of what looked like a screen. Oh, nice. Yeah. And just proceeded to dance around on stage and go out. It was cool. And then, of course, he accepted his... I think he won something. Um, and then he... The best gay man to come out and do R&B. He had some type of complaint where, like, he hates that his music is classified under the uh, urban section. What the fuck? Yeah, he was All like, right. yeah, okay. I appreciate this award, but I feel like... I always get lumped in with, like, rap just because, you know, I look like what I look like and I always get fit in with, like, urban. Uh, I, I don't know. It, it felt like a I way mean, to call it racist without calling it racist because he literally said the word I mean, urban to him is like using a politically correct way of saying the N-word. Right. So he won an award and then totally disregarded the platform that he wanted on. Yeah, that's... I don't I, I don't really get into the whole Grammys, Emmys, Oscars, all that stuff. Cause 
proud, yeah. proud for him. You know, no, I, I mean, I've yeah, loved no, Tyler I mean, since his early stuff. And no, no, I'm not, I'm not dissing him at all. It's crazy he won it. I just don't like watching those things because. Nine times out of ten, they get up there and they do their speech, and then they throw out some like opinionated bullshit or whatever, this, that, or the other, and it's like just, just take your award, just go. It's funny you, he you had, did, you did good. He had Jasper with him, and uh, Jasper. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Jasper apparently is like his best friend, and uh, he goes with him everywhere. So uh, when he went up on stage, Jasper went with him, and uh, Jasper had his switch with him. He's playing a switch out. In the- Nice. He said, yeah, he tweeted later. He was like, oh, they got me with my Switch. I was playing Pokemon in the audience. <laughs> Damn. Uh, Could have been playing Prison Princess. He could Nope, not till tomorrow. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, in terms of gaming in my week, um, I had a long weekend with a girlfriend. Um, it's our two-year anniversary. Hold the applause. Thank you, thank you. Um, so I went out of state and hung out with her. <clears throat> I also stayed. your mother's birthday. It was my mother's birthday. Um, so I basically just hung out with her all weekend. Didn't really get a lot of game time in, but it was a good time regardless. Don't need games to have a good time. Um, what I have been playing since I've been back and before I left, I played a lot of Dead by Daylight. Uh, you see that on my my streams over there, twitch.tv forward slash Sir Snack. Um, my Discord group's helping me get somewhat of a following, trying to aim for that affiliate status. Um uh, the struggle. Yeah. It's not really a struggle. I mean, I enjoy playing games. It does add I another... The struggle of getting affiliate. Yeah. yeah. It does add that extra element of like, man, I just want to play some games, but then you like, okay, set up the stream, make sure everything's running. Does it look good on this side? Okay. Yeah. And now I'm adding chat effects and all that other stuff, which is just another extra hassle that only I give a shit about. I mean, it's cool for <laughs> chat. It's, all right. it's already a job at this point. Yeah. It's cool for chat when people get in there, they could smack some keys and make some noises. Yeah. Interaction. Be, be entertained for a second. Yeah. Um, Joey knows. Joey's been hanging out with me, playing some Dead by Daylight. He uh, he experienced... Uh, i got to figure out what's wrong on my Twitch thing. Because I don't get your notifications whenever you start streaming, apparently. Oh, really? Yeah. You, you said you did some streaming over the weekend? Uh, no, I did some yesterday and last week. I didn't get anything about that. That's fucking... That's bothering the hell out of me. I don't know. Because, like, those random-ass dudes that I... Followed played, 20 years ago. Yeah, those random ass dudes I played Final Fantasy fourteen with. I still get notifications from them whenever they go on, so I don't know why the fuck. Do you got the bell on my name? I'm pretty sure I do. But uh, Joey got to experience uh, my first, I don't know, hate mail, if you will. I did really good with a character that I played with for the first time. Yeah, they both clicked. Yeah. You know? And uh, it was just, it was just pretty funny last night first time playing a new character i was like i don't know how this is gonna go mop the floor with him who'd you play uh the huntress as the killer yeah i only play the killer i have not played i don't want to play this unless i have a group of people it seems like a nightmare trying to right. do some choreography with yeah, rando go get all the generators and yeah them. i don't want to do that um but i played as the huntress for the first time mop the fucking floor anyway they start commenting in the fucking corner when the match is over just calling me trash. Just trashed here. You're camping. You're tunneling. I don't even know what these terms mean. It's my the first... players? Yeah. Oh, yeah. On the enemy they, they, team. Probably the Dead by Daylight. That, they go hard. Yeah. Me. They, and I'm they, like, I don't even know what I did. I, you, know, I, you, I was, you, you beat them and they're salty. So yeah. There you go. I was like, man, it's 4v1. And you're <laughs> complaining? What the hell? But, yeah. I, I thought that was a pretty good spectacle last night. Because they were like, man, you're trash. You're the worst. You're, man, this is terrible. And I was just like, your tears taste good. I said, and done the little asterisk thing. It's like slurps your hatred up with a straw. <laughs> Better than y'all bitch asses. <laughs> yeah. But, but, uh, four so having some good three. moments on the stream. Nice. Yeah. A little bit of audience. Shout out to Monster. Shout out to uh, Joey, of course. Uh, the other Joey, he hopped in there. Joey Plummer. Uh, damn, my name dropped him again. Motherfucker. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Enigma. Beep it, beep it out. Hey, editor. Can we beat that up? Yeah. Uh, look at the time mark. Uh, uh, 14, 14. 14 minutes. 14, 14. Um, yeah. Enigma. Uh, Brew 2, thank you for the amazing community that I'm getting into. Um, yeah. Gotta give my dues. I don't know much about Dead by Daylight, aside from the fact that, like, the Trapper's overpowered, apparently. At least it was when I watched a few videos on it. It's been, like, forever ago now. The Nurse? Isn't there a Nurse character? Or there is. I don't have many unlocked, because, like I said, just started, and I don't really want to put money into the game. I got it from Game Pass, and I would like to have more than four fucking... Well, got, Killers uh, unlocked, they've got, a, they've, but, got a, they've got a 
got a bunch now, don't they? Yeah, but you got to buy them or slowly earn them. So I'm going to slowly earn them. Good on you. Until I get tired of it and I just drop 20 bucks to buy them all. Is that all it costs? Yeah, it's, I think it's like $5 for older ones, some of the newer ones maybe, a little more expensive. $20 doesn't seem that bad to unlock everybody. Yeah, but learning to play them is a whole other thing. Because they're vastly they different the, uh, play don't styles. The, don't they have the guy from uh, Scream on there? Yeah. yeah. What's his name? I don't know. I think it's... Ghostface. Ghostface? Yeah. They have the Demigorgon. What? From Stranger Things? Really? Yeah. I just play as Ghostface. <laughs> Ghostface it's just, Killer. It's the wackiest fucking killer in a slasher film ever. How many times have you seen a person get killed by a garage door? That's just... That's top tier. Murdering right there. So other than Kobe Bryant, <laughs> your actual week, not celebrity news in your week. My week, gaming-wise, was filled with incredible highs and incredible lows. Because a couple of days after last week's podcast, I platinumed Death, Death Stranding. Oh, oh, oh. oh, thanks, man. Thanks. 99 hours. God damn. <clears throat> yeah. That's a rough platinum. Well, a lot of it... I don't want to say a lot of it. Probably 10 hours of that or so. It was probably just... AFK. Oh, really? Yeah, well, still, 80 hours for a plat? I mean, that seems about normal, maybe. I mean, I knew it going in. I looked up... After I beat the game, I looked up trophy guides and stuff. Some of the game's it. long, story-wise. Eh. The side missions and stuff, are, that, that's the bulk of it. But, like the day after that, Platinum Diakos a 6. Damn. You know, Platinum and... Uh, man. Platinum Spree. That one didn't take any... N- Anywhere near as long as Death Stranding did. Two days, three days tops, I think. Maybe four. Uh, then I was checking my backlog. I was like, what games do I need to check out now? Picked up Near Automata. Oh, man. That is a fucking awesome game. I want to say I want to play it. Bro, that game is not only like a dope hack and slash bullet hell pot platformer. That game is every genre, yeah. action genre <laughs> you can think of. But my god, that story is like a mind fuck and a half, dude. Like the uh, existentialism concept that they go with is ridiculous. This is the biggest but I'm ever going to say in my life. But I have to throw some middle fingers its way because it fucked me bad. Now, <clears throat> when you first say this, I wouldn't mind to be getting some things done. But I'm sure that's not what you're talking about. Well, that butt don't quit. I will say that. <laughs> and they plan for that shit. Because that skirt is just short enough that when you're doing certain actions, it flutters up and you just get a big old view. And it just keeps you going. She's a robot. She's an android, first of all. So Splitting hairs here, Tony. Yeah, I'll split her hairs. <laughs> that game has uh, multiple endings, if you didn't know. 26 to me, in fact. <laughs> yeah. Most, one one is just taking the chip out of her head, right? <laughs> so well, like, stupid uh, like that. Yeah, there's there's the vast majority of them are just dumb. There's one for eating a fish and you die. That's an ending. So Sounds like a good ending. Canon what like main story wise, there's five endings. That's still and a lot. Not really, because like four of those are basically the same ending but from different per, uh perspectives. And then the fifth ending E is a weird like sort of reset point in the game and basically what you do is you play as one of the little pod guys follows you around shoots your bullets or whatever when d- does your sub weapons you battle the credits which is you know bear with me you battle the credits like uh, you know like in melee when you yeah. Be, yeah like that and you get to the end and it asks you a whole bunch of questions like hey you battled the credits. That was hard. You got help from other players. Do you want to help out other players? And I'm like, yeah, sure, sure. Why, why, why not? And it's like, oh, but if you help out other players, it's going to erase your data. I'm like, is it? Is it, though? That's That seems too mean for a game to do. So oh, I was, God. Did it do it? Yeah, it did. It sure <laughs> enough did. Erased everything. Everything. Is that an ending? That's not really an ending. That's just bullshit. That is bullshit. Did you replay it? Oh, yeah. No, i got to get the platinum one now. No, oh, yeah. But there was 40 hours just gone. 
Played it on a harder difficulty now, or no? Goddamn no! Hell no! Is it hard enough on its own? That game is hard enough on its own. Hmm. It doesn't look. It doesn't seem like it on face value, but there's a lot of like little nuances and stuff. Especially when you get surrounded by the machines are all sporadic with their attacks. At, what I don't want to go into too much detail, but yeah. So that was uh, that was something that that that, that game did. So when that's that happened, cool though, and it is cool. It's shitty that 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 you should have. I would have googled probably. I should have. Yeah, I would have googled. I wouldn't have let that happen to me. Yeah, but uh, but like you, I would have thought that's that's bullshit. Yeah, I thought yeah. because the, because the game is already kind of like that in a way. It's already kind of mind fucky at certain points where it like trolls you intentionally and stuff. So I'm like, well, this can't be real. Nobody would do that. Sure enough, it erases all your data. I immediately closed the application, went to system, save data, see if my save data was still there. If I could back it up, gone. Like, oh, the cloud though. Should have went to the cloud. I did. It's gone. It couldn't have got it from the cloud, too. Everything. Man. Yep. I booted it back up and everything. I had to make a new, like, username thing. Every, I was like, well, that sucks. So, I started the Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC. Oh, shit. How's that going? That's what you sent me a screenshot of yesterday. Yeah. It's not a lot to it, which is disappointing for uh, 30, I seen my boy. $30. Yeah, Leon's in there. Along with uh, Aerith. So... How is she alive? I, I mean, it doesn't matter. Broken. It doesn't matter. Dog, dude, she's a memory of a friendship's heart's past. Dog, reincarnated through the darkness. What? Come on, man. Keep Everything up. that you said sounded like <laughs> real shit. Just keep up. It no, sounded like you uh, knew exactly what the fuck you were saying and said it with such conviction that I believe you. They brought back some very... clouds in the game, so that would... I don't know. Uh, Cloud is not in Kingdom Hearts 3. Well, he was in two, so he's already. Oh yeah, I mean. So so Sora knows of him, and apparently they're. I don't know, man. I don't remember Aerith being in the other ones, and as far as I know, she was in two. Was she? Yeah. I don't remember that part. I remember Yuffie and Sid and Leon, but not much of Aerith. Anyway, uh, as far as the DLC story stuff goes, spoiler territory. If you're interested, Kingdom Hearts three things. Will we be able to understand it? Probably fucking not. So go ahead. Kingdom Hearts three ends. Good guys win. This is the TLDR. Good guys win, but at the cost of losing Kyrie. <gasps> oh. So. But not really. Because. But not really. Now because we're the, Yeah, because the DLC reminds you literally what happened at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. But this time, Sora uses his power of waking, time travel, to go back right before the final boss fights. And play it out in different perspectives and uh, kind of manipulate things and stuff. So he saves Kyrie, but we lose, we lose Sora in the process this time. And that's where I'm at currently in the DLC. Is uh, They're trying to track down what, what's going on with Sora. Man, <clears throat> once time travel happens in like any form of media, be it a comic book or a movie or a video game... Everything goes out the fucking window. It really does. No, nothing starts to make sense anymore. And I'm going to be really late to the party on this. But I just got done watching, finally, in the game with the with the girlfriend over the weekend. Boy, you're about a... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a year and, late on that one. Yeah, me. but the time travel in that movie doesn't make any goddamn sense. So, I just want to... Yeah. You're, I mean, you're right. Absolutely fucking right. Because they explain it in a way like no other fucking movie has yeah, explained just, it they, just for that purpose. They're like, well, this isn't fucking Time Cop. This isn't Back to the Future. This is this. And then they go back in the past, but they see themselves, but they don't see themselves because they don't need to see themselves. But nothing that I do then affects their future now because it's a different timeline. So they didn't go back in the past. They went back to the past in a different universe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because if they went back to their direct past, it would have fucked with their timeline well, no, that say, they have now. The way they <laughs> the way they say it is dumb because they're like, we're taking the time stones, but once we're through with them... We're, we're going to take them right back we're to gonna, that gonna, certain place in time. We're going to return them and everything will be hunky-dory. It's like, <laughs> motherfucker, what? At one point, Captain America knocked out the other Captain America. Loki ran off with <laughs> that the... That is tes- America's ass. <laughs> yeah. Loki ran off with the Tesseract somehow, and it's like... Bro, those timelines are fucked at that point. Like, yeah, what? but it doesn't matter because they're not the timelines that we care about. Yeah, so, whatever. Chalk it up to that. But Kingdom Hearts is already, it's always had time travel in it, like, quote unquote. Because they're always fucking zipping back and forth through hearts and souls and darkness this, darkness that. <laughs> Xehanort time travels all the goddamn time. That's why he's got four different versions of Ansem walking around. And that's what, uh, in Kingdom Hearts 3, that's what Sora unlocks. The power of waking thing. 
that essentially lets him just do whatever the fuck he wants, basically. So he's Sora's essentially a god now. Good stuff. Can he beat Goku? I'm just, <laughs> I'm just. That's everyone's first answer when someone becomes omnipotent, right? Yeah. One v one, Ultra Instinct Goku. Uh, fucking One Punch Man. <laughs> uh, no, they added a uh, they added a thing though in the DLC it's called the Data Battles. Apparently, this was in one of the other Kingdom Hearts thing because Colby lost his shit when he saw it. But uh, so what where you go back and you fight? Uh, it's all the Organization Thirteen yeah, members. Yeah, they added that in the. 2.5, 7.5, 365 yeah, days, turbo, remix, turbo prologue remix, yeah. to reminded square, HD. Square root of E to the natural log. Yeah, uh, one of the five final HD remakes before 3 yeah. is, had that. But essentially it's um, it's all the Organization 13 members, except they're just roided the fuck out. Yeah, they're hard as hell, yeah. Yeah. Cause and you can find them early on. Well, at least in, I think when I played 2, the remaster of 2. You can find him early on. I was like, ooh, what is this? And it was just, <laughs> why could you <laughs> yeah. find this here? Yeah. So, like, I, I discovered that, and um, Colby was watching me play some of them, or fight some of them, and I was like, you know, I, I platinum Kingdom Hearts 3 back in, like, last year. Man. So I was like, we gotta we gotta make you some banners, dog. We need <laughs> to get you on the game capture system, man. I don't know. The fuck? That. You, man? As much as you platinum and shit, That's... you just need to start streaming. It's my thing. I know. Nobody, nobody wants to see somebody platinum. You know how boring that would be to watch? Man, people enjoy other people's successes. It's like watching people like do um, average game. Average games done quick or awesome games done quick. I always say average. I don't know why. <laughs> but watching people perfect those is boring as shit. But people watch them. People watch those people fail hundreds of times before they... There's, just... a, dead, there's a dead run. There's yeah. A dead run. I gotta reset. I watch somebody for the hundredth time do... Uh, Super Mario 64 oh, in like, yeah, like 40 that's... minutes and I'm like every time I watch it I don't care who it is or what they're doing it's just like man my little kid self is just like this, oh, the, this uh, is impossible those are impressive but the blindfold ones are those are the ones that really fucking blow my mind like blindfold Dark Souls bosses blindfold Super Punch Out like that shit's ridiculous how much time and effort they have to put in that but you're just a platinum champ man I'm not really a champ. I've got 11 plats now. And only like... I, even, I think I got like five. Only like nine of those are really plats because two of them are like just gimmies. You know what I mean? Do you have I Am Mayo? Huh? There's a game called I Am Mayo that has a platinum. And all you have to do is push uh, square like a million times. No, I don't have that one, but... uh, <laughs> Undertale's plat was basically free because you basically just beat the game and you get a plat. And any Telltale game is a free plat because, you know, you just... You, you do play, all the options. Yeah. yeah, you just play through it and it's like, there you go. There's your platinum. Uh, no, my most proudest one is probably, like, Bloodborne. And I wanted to do Dark Souls 3, but, God, that's a lot of work for the Dark Souls 3 one. Is. I thought you did all the Dark Souls. Mm-hmm. I was close to it, but then the DLCs dropped and that, you know. Oh, but do you have the plat for the main part of Dark Souls? Oh, no. No. Because at the time, to get the plat, you had to get, like, max rank and all the covenants and shit. And oh, gross. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that doesn't so, count. Yeah, that's so that's stupid. So, that's why that went by the wayside. But uh, getting back to the Kingdom Hearts 3 thing. So the data battles, I rolled up in there, like, Big Dick Henry, like, level... <laughs> Big Dick Dudley. I've been yeah. saying that for some reason. I don't know where the fuck I got it from, but... <laughs> Big Dick Dudley. <laughs> I was like, bro, I'm level 99, got the ultimate keyblade, best best parse, best stats, best whatever. Oh, shit, you parsing now? Yeah. You got a, you got a script running in the background? And so, like, <laughs> I feel like they did this on purpose. They tease you. Like, they got all the doorways to the bosses set up, like, kind of in, like, a semicircle thing. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to start on the left, you know, whatever, and just work my way around in a circle. First one I fought was, uh, it was... Don't give me names, just... It was, it was the dark version of Riku, you know? Okay, the, there the, we yeah, go. There, yeah. Oh. Easy. First, like, first try, beat him. I'm like, oh, pff, this is going to be no problem. Whatever. So then I moved over, like, to the next door, and it was... You play Kingdom Hearts 2, right? Yeah. You know, you remember the last two lightsaber guy? Zemnis? He had the lightsaber blade hand things or whatever? Sure. Fucking wrecked me. Tried, like, two or three times. Wrecked me. So I was like, okay, come back to that one later. Every other boss was that way. They they plan that shit on purpose. 
gave you the first one and then was like, well, now you gotta learn yeah, the battles. Yeah, there's like, there's like two, there's like two bosses in that room that are like freebies, and then the rest of them are like, learn boy, the you better, you better learn these strats, you better learn when to block, because every fucking boss is like just a, they have a phase where it's like, doesn't matter if you attack me, yeah, it'll damage me, but you're not gonna, you're not gonna do a combo. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you'll hit me like twice. But then I'll just power through your shit and fuck you up. So you literally have to, like, learn every attack, learn every phase, block this, dodge that, block that. And then you wait for that one moment where they, like, do this one combo in and they're, like, catch their breath for a second. Then you're like, oh, my God, here's my chance. You smack them three times and then then you gotta wait, rinse, repeat. There's a bar of health gone. Eight more to go. So. Before I beat Xylophone minus all the vowels. (laughs) Yeah. That's when I that's when I hit you up earlier. Uh, I told you I was fighting, fighting uh, Master Zayanort. Yeah, he was the he was the thirteenth guy, and then I that was like so. I cleared out all the data bosses. Now I got to work on the secret boss, which is, I don't know what that is yet, but we'll, we'll see when we get there. So you're getting your you're gonna finish the DLC? You're gonna get the plat for that? Uh, it's only like four trophies. Oh, so it's not even a plat. I don't even know. If, I don't know if there's a plat associated with it, but it's only like four things like beat all the bosses beat the get the ending credits thing whatever it's yeah, it's not bad so yeah that's, that's been my week it's mostly. been our weeks in gaming yeah let's talk about the week of gaming in the news news news, news, news. <clears throat> you guys you guys remember that uh that silent hill trailer thing that happened a couple of years ago that everyone thought was going to be like the greatest thing since sliced bread yes norman Reedus in the suburb in Ditas. Yeah, I don't think I don't Norman Reedus was in the the PT, right? He was associated with the game, but he wasn't in the PT. Wait, was were he? they in the trailer when he walked away? Oh, maybe. Yeah. Oh, the, the uh, if you found all the Easter eggs or whatever, crap. I never did that. Yeah, I barely made it through that shit, like once or twice. That shit was a nightmare. <laughs> it was shit was a fucking nightmare. It was pretty rough. Well, we all know that got scrapped. You can't even fucking play it no more. Can't even re-download it on your hard drives. Cash in on your pachinko machines. Yeah, but apparently uh, Konami is silently nice. working on some uh, Silent Hill stuff in the background. Uh, there was two articles that I read. One said that they are definitively working on them, and the other one said Konami has spoken out saying they are interested in somehow rebooting, or quote, soft rebooting the franchise. Hmm. Huh. I wonder if they're going to take the... Uh... The Capcom approach and just start dishing out remakes. I think everyone's going to hate them regardless. Yeah. I think without Kojima on the project or nowhere near it, after what they did to him, is not going to look good for them. We did have to fact check myself, though. I thought that Kojima had a hand in all of the Silent Hills, but apparently he only did... uh, the reimagining of yeah PT the playable tease the yep. playable teaser, but still um, with the way that looked and how just amazing everyone just infatuated I guess the internet and everybody was with how that was going to come along yeah I would have loved for that to have been a fleshed out thing because my guy was that just not the embodiment of just pure horror pure horror suspense mind fuckery everything so coulda shoulda woulda been that. Yeah, but now they're going to... Like I said, I think it's it's going to be hard for Konami to do anything related to what uh, Kojima has even slightly touched. Even like I said, I know he didn't... I didn't know that he touched uh, uh, what, one, two. I guess the only one he worked on. I was wrong as shit. But their uh, Metal Gear, what are they going to do with that? Uh, nothing. Yeah, everyone will hate them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess pachinko machines or pinball machines are fine for everything else. I'm glad you brought that up for a second. Because ever since Hideo Kojima split from Konami Mm -hmm. and did, you know... um, Kojima projecting? Yeah, there you go. (laughs) Fuck, I I couldn't fucking think of the... (laughs) The easiest developer. Yeah. I was like, I was going over in my head. I was like, Ludin something? I don't know. But, it's uh, just like that, that head, that head in the, it's like a skull in like a space suit. It's a Luden. I don't know, there's some lore about it in Death Stranding. Of course Stranding there is, it, yeah. of course there fucking is. But, I kind of hate Hideo Kojima, the way he treats his actors, at least the main ones, because like, remember Metal Gear Solid Five is about, is, that's about where that split happened, 
right, when that whole drama between Konami and Kojima started going on. And they had fucking uh, Kiefer Sutherland as Snake, right? Or Boss, whatever, Big Boss, OG Boss, whatever. Boss Snake, OG Snake, whatever. They had Kiefer, they brought, they bring in fucking Kiefer Sutherland as Snake, and I swear to God, I'm not exaggerating, he might have had like 15 lines of dialogue in the entire game, right? Mm-hmm. And... Same deal with Death Stranding. Like, yeah, they got Norman Reedus. That's cool. I'm not dissing Kiefer Sutherland or Norman Reedus. They're amazing. But, like, 90% of the cutscenes and dialogue is literally just... They're just standing there while other people are talking, and occasionally they'll get, like, a sentence or two in, and that's it. What was the point of cutting David Hayter? Was there a point behind that? I think it was just because, uh, you know, David Hayter was Solid Snake. Okay. Don't question it. Yeah. Are you questioning Kojima? I guess. Just fucking plebeian fool. Yeah, my bad. Have, how many drugs have you done? You can't even fathom what yeah, kind I, of dimension Yeah, I, I absolutely could not fathom the yeah. amount of drugs. Um, new Silent Hill game. You up for it? Maybe. I'd be down. If it, if it had any kind of resemblance to PT, that'd be cool. But we'll see where that goes. Maybe yeah. maybe it'll just, just be a Silent Hill pachinko, mach- pachinko machine, so... Well, uh, speaking of PT, we got a trailer from uh, Ninja Theory. I guess it was last Wednesday. It was literally right after we recorded the uh, podcast. This shit happened. Uh, Project Mara? How would you say that? M-A-R-A? Mara? I guess that's right. Um, And all they gave us was a little teaser. Teaser teaser snippet. And just what they showed us was a hallway. And a lady, more or less it was shadows or reflections of somebody that wasn't there. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you, when we watched it, did you pay attention to the sides? Not really. Because it was a clear hallway, you could see right down it, but in the reflections on the corner, you could see someone walking. Oh. And then this lady appears, and there's some vague, you know, dialogue of like, I don't remember. Ah. But then it kind of gets dramatic, and it pans, and there's like some disoriented, terrible looking face. And there, I can't remember, we should have put the quote on here. Do you remember what it said? It's going to be a like, horror uh, game, but they're they're trying to like it's going to be a realist, a grounded, realistic. They wanted to it was something like they wanted to capture the horror of mental terror or like mental illness or something, and like just really dive in depth to that or something along those lines. So, uh, fuck that. <laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna be rough. It does. It did look a little bit. I don't know. When I say it looked a little bit, there was like I said, it was just a teaser. But I got a lot of PT vibes from it. And um, Ninja Theory was what bought out by Microsoft, so that'll probably be exclusive to them. Damn. Um, yeah. Well, PC and then at least for a while. Just kill exclusives. Just stop it. Yeah. At this point, why not? We're all moving to fucking PC ass looking consoles. Everything's running AMD type. Architecture, anyway. Just do cloud-based games. Yeah. For everything. I don't know about that. Just download. Just download your whatever game. Download your Stadia to your TV and play. No, not that. I'm not talking about like that. That's cloud-based, right? (laughs) I mean, that's a cloud-based gaming platform. I'm talking about like cloud-based software. Just release your whatever Project Mara. The software is out there on the interwebs, and you just digitally download it onto your console. Just anything you want. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Boost sales? Well, it would be good for the devs themselves, and it'd be good for the players. But I guess that would leave... I don't know. I don't know who's losing there. Because probably manufacturers or uh, first parties give them money. That's got to be the reason, right? Incentive? Hey, you put it on our platform first, or at least let us... It's like they're sponsors. They're NASCAR sponsors. I mean, that's that's honestly what it is, right? I guess so. It just seems... You you go back and look at, like, uh, the original... Tomb Raider, not the original, original, uh, the reboot. God damn, we're getting old. Um, the reboot of Tomb Raider, I think, was exclusive uh, to Xbox for like a fucking year. But it didn't say that at first. It went out a couple of months, and then everyone's like, oh man, this is a cool game. Too bad I don't have an Xbox. How the fuck does that happen? When and then six Tomb months Raider, later... When Tomb Raider started out on PlayStation yeah. 1? Jesus. Lara Croft, you But slut. it took PlayStation like a year to get, I think it was yeah, one of the Tomb Raiders... Xbox exclusives. 
It just doesn't make sense to me in this day and age with exclusives. I don't, I don't get it. Everything um, runs on like basically the same fucking hardware, but we can't play it because yeah. Hey. So like back in the day, like the Xbox PS2 days, is like it kind of made sense a little bit because like only on Xbox and it was like kind of hype, you know? Like oh man, this is I can only play this on that. Wow, this is unique. But now it's like everybody has pretty much access to whatever game they want to play. So why except for kids, I mean, we were kids then, so it was harder for us. It was shitty when we got a console and then something cool came out on the. Yeah, I mean that is, that is true. I was a weird kid. I only had a fucking GameCube for the longest time. What the fuck was I doing? Where the GameCube fucking Bob dog? I know, but what the hell was I doing? Yeah. I was playing my Luigi's Mansion, my Melees, and my Animal Crossing. Bro, that's... My, my Metroid Primes. Three, then, three then, out of three out of those four games are top. But tier. then when I when I hang out with my friends, everyone's playing fucking Halo and I don't know whatever PS2 fucking had. I know it's a lot, but just everything's escaping me right now. But so I kind of felt like I was in the kiddie pool, you know? Like hell yeah, I'm having a good time when I go back to my house, but. Nobody wants to come to my fucking house to play fucking Melee, because we're going to go over there and, you know, grab energy swords and battle rifles. Fucking do a local area network of Halo 2, get the gold warthog. Hell yeah, let's do it. I know, meanwhile, I'm like, someone get a GameCube so I can bring my memory card over so I can come to your village in my Animal Crossing town. No. It never happened. Yeah. Melee, uh, GameCubes were basically Melee machines in terms of, uh... Pikmin. God damn, I love Pikmin. No, I'm talking about in terms of like party play. Oh, yeah. When you go to somebody's up, Melee was the that's the guy. Oh, yeah, I can't think of maybe uh, some maybe some Kirby Air Red. Bomberman. I had a lot of uh, competition. Fuck that game. I had a lot of competition over at the house for some Bomberman back in the day. The game is something. We used to uh, we used to play each other for uh, just bragging rights, but like we you know, we were fucking shitty kids, so we just cussed and, and or whatever. But uh, we'd hang out and whoever won got to say whatever they wanted. You know, okay. Yeah, well, as spin, a kid, spin the bottle, bomber man at this. Yeah, it was a kid. So whenever whoever won, it'd be like, "Fuck y'all, y'all piece of shit." No. They'd be able to fucking, and you can't say nothing. You know, you just gotta accept it. I remember my mom came home one day. We were doing that shit. Fuck y'all, motherfuckers! I goddamn beat y'all. Y'all don't even know how to play the bomber man. My mom came in. What the fuck is going? Who the fuck? Why the fuck mm-hmm. are y'all yelling? Mom, calm down. He has bragging rights. <laughs> <laughs> we can't. This is so uncool. You can't tell him what to do. He won. If you want to play him first and then bitch, if you win, that's cool. But grab a controller. <laughs> let's, settle, let's settle this on the on the fucking game screen. Let's go. But until then, he has full bragging rights. I'm not even sure you can say that in this house while he's here. You better <laughs> calm down, mom. He's on such a on such a high <laughs> echelon right now. You can't even comprehend. So you might want to go outside, mom. Turn around and come back in here and start this a different way. He has transcended the bombs. He is Boston bomber status. Whoa. Whoa. Cherry be the bomb like he ran in Boston. Too soon? Too late? Oh, it's been a while. Medium girl? He made, made a movie about that. Tyler made an album about it. Actually, he just made a line in an album about it. Okay. That's what, what <laughs> I made a whole album dedicated to the Boston. <laughs> it was called Char- Cherry Bomb, and then there was that one line. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, anyway, moving on down the line to... This is just the weirdest, stupidest fucking thing. Maybe when it pans out, yeah, I'll say gotta, otherwise, we gotta, but... Yeah, we gotta see how this... Uh, Atari, yes, that Atari. The people that made a console, they're actually making a new console. Did you know they're doing? Why? Yeah, they, they have a Why? console. I don't know. I don't know what it's doing either, but I think uh, they did a tweet not too long ago saying it plays Fortnite. So there's that for it. But it's like a... Should, uh, that uh, should thrive in this competitive market. Oh, yeah, especially now with Fortnite probably not being as popular as it was at least a year ago, right? Mm-hmm. But, uh... Yeah, it's, it, it looks like an old school ass fucking Atari. It has like wood grain on it and shit. It looks like an old school 80s thing. It's wild. Why? Anyway, so yeah, that company that made all those fucking games that no one will even look at or play nowadays unless you have a heavy, heavy, heavy set of uh, nostalgia glasses on. I bet the ABGN will be right at home. Maybe it's more on the NES. No, I mean, he's got them all, doesn't he? Yeah. It's his whole thing. Yeah. He likes the old school stuff. He can play, uh,. The fuck they call it Sinistar or uh, Cornwallis's Revenge or what the, what the hell? <laughs> Which one Cust- was that? Custer's Revenge. Is that the one with the, that's the one where you rape the Indian? Yeah, shit? that's what I thought. Yeah, that's yeah, fucked up. Why I laugh? I don't know. Um, but yeah, Atari is looking into uh, making gaming hotels. I guess it's supposed to be for more of like esports centered. I, I honestly don't know. Uh, when we read the 
they had like an interview with a lead guy. And he said, you know, we're going to be breaking ground, I think he said in August. Mm-hmm. And, and they're uh, still in their planning phase. Yeah. But they're trying to open up eight of them, I believe, was the number. I don't see how it's going to work. But they're trying to uh, encapsulate that 80s themed arcade whatever. Style. Why? I don't know. But they, they kept using the word esports in the thing. So maybe it's going to be, maybe if you're an esports league, hey man, instead of staying at the Hampton, like you said earlier, maybe we'll, we'll go stay at the yeah, Atari we're, Hotel. Uh, yeah, we're trying to just... Hit us up. Our room is uh, 206 at the Atari. We're staying at the Atari. Yeah. That actually sounds like a cool hotel name. I mean, it does sound like a cool hotel name, but I wonder what, like, Hilton and, like, Hampton and Marriott and all them, they're, you know, all them, like, big wig CEOs are just sitting back like, the fuck are they thinking they're doing? <laughs> are they for real right now? Atari just shuffles into the board. Like, do they meeting. even have Carrot Head? <laughs> yeah. Like, is Carrot Head going to be there? Is he going to open for something? It's like... No, I think they have Pac-Man. I was like, man, that doesn't even... It wasn't even worth it on the Atari. The fucking Hotel Trivago guy is going to be like, shop Hotel Trivago. Save countless deals, unless you're staying at the Atari. <laughs> the fuck are you doing at an Atari? I mean, I don't know what would possess like somebody like that to do this. I would stay at an Atari just for the hell of it. I don't think me and you could afford to stay. If this is going to be one of eight locations, can you imagine the price to stay at this place? I'll just bring my Atari. Trade, yeah. in, trade in value. Trade-in value? Yeah. I think they buried them in the dirt along with their copies of E.T. E. for the e. Atari 2600. E. I'll bring in a copy of E.T. That's my ticket. You can't take mine. What was this for? This shit is literally worthless, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it is a 2600. I'm just glad that I own one. It looks Are like, you? Yeah, it looks like it was used as a coaster at one point. It actually does. <laughs> There's a nice ring around it. Yeah, Code Monkeys episode about that. Code Monkeys like Fritos. Code Monkeys like you... That was a good show. That was a good show. Bring back G4 Tech TV. Bring back Adam. Adam Sessler tweeted the other day saying that he's working on something that he hasn't worked on in a long time. X-Play? I don't know. It was vague shit. Vague shit. I don't like that. So everyone was just like, are you doing, is G4 coming back? Like, that's all the tweets were. It's like, are you going to be reviewing games? One dude fucked it up. I'm pretty sure he did it on purpose. Does it include a 5 out of 10? <laughs> <laughs> bring, bring him back. Bring back Morgan Webb. Bring back... Drunk Link and the Canadian guy. And uh, what was the what was the weasel? The, the ha- ratty. Ha- ratty, 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 fucking yeah. ratty, ratty. Bring back the Yu-Gi-Oh gangsters. Oh man, all of it. It's all good stuff. So, yeah, so maybe we'll be able to see Adam Sessler next Staying year. Staying at the Atari. Yeah, uh, see a stand up. Maybe that's what he was trying to perfect. He'll have it ready by August. Um, moving on to the to the big meat of the news. This is uh, the big meat. The big meat. Yeah. I was careful to phrase it that way, Brian. Okay. Yeah. Um, Nintendo apparently has actually made money from their fucking mobile games. No. When you ask anybody around you, hey man, do you play that Nintendo game on your smartphone? If you, I, I don't know what sociopaths you know, but you, 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 they probably say no. So I don't know anybody that plays <laughs> any of these. Um, but they made over a billion dollars with their uh, mobile market. This is coming from Sensor Tower, who uh, basically released this upon the world. I read it on five different other fucking websites. So I just grabbed this graph from them. Um, I don't remember which one of these came first. I think Super Mario Run did. That sounds right. Yeah, that was the very first one. And then I want to say Fire Emblems came next. That was a pretty big one. I played that for a bit. Because I, Jesse, I don't know uh... what the fuck Dragalia Lost is. Or when that came out. I don't either. I think Jesse still plays Fire Emblem Heroes. Graham might too as well. Um, really? Yeah. Well, let's run these numbers down because this is ridiculous. Well, Fire Emblem's got to beat. <laughs> By a large margin. Uh, Fire Emblem Heroes, which... What do you call those games? That Like a gotcha game? Strategy game. But the oh, game, oh, yeah, yeah. Is it, yeah, is yeah, that what, it's, it's, yeah. what they call them, like a gotcha game? Yeah. You sink money into it and you get people. Yeah. So you... you you can assemble a team, and in order to get certain characters, you got to roll dice with real money, and hopefully you get over-tiered guy that you can level up to be even better than the rest of it. Something like that? Yeah. I played much. it for like a week, and was like, I don't like Fire Emblem. Why am I even playing this? It was just hype at the time. Damn, you don't like Fire Emblem? I do not like Fire I don't like the, the battling system. Okay. It's like grid-based and then weird... I don't know. Strategy. It's not a JRPG. If it was just straight JRPG, I could probably deal with it. Um, it's turn-based. Kinda. 
It's on a grid, right? Yeah, you take turns. Yeah, but can't you move off the grid when you do when you turns over or something? And like, I mean, you I, when I when I look at that game, I think of like Advance Wars. You remember Advance Wars? Is it anything like Advance Wars? <laughs> what have you? Ne- what have you never played Fire Emblem? You have your you have your little grid. Yeah, and you move a guy here, and, and then if they, he's, clo- if he's if close, close enough, enough they can do close specific enough to attack. Attacks. Yeah, if he's close enough to attack somebody, you attack him, and there's that's your turn. Yeah, it's like Advance Wars then. Yeah. Or Advance Wars is probably like Fire Emblem, if we're, Maybe. we're being honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah probably. I'm, Fire Emblem's been around for a damn minute. Anyway, $656 million off of microtransactions alone. Because it's a free game. That's free money. That, uh, well, there was well, a developer yeah, team yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, there's a budget there. But I mean, Most yeah, of that is free money. I was going to say, because most of the sprites and everything could have been stolen from, well, not stolen because they own it, but... Reused? Yeah. SNES, DS, Super Nintendo, I mean, uh, Game Boy Color, or no, Game Boy Advance. That sounds right. Yeah. And that's what it looks like, just beautiful pixel art, a little more flowy. It is It is pretty, not going to lie. It definitely has that, that spritey animation of sparkly, soundy effects and everything. So good for them. That's a lot of goddamn money to make off of microtransactions <laughs> yeah, alone. That's not a buy-in for a game, that is... Solely on people buying characters or whatever it is you can buy in that game. It's a popular game. Popular franchise, so I can see that. Oh, let's see. What does that say? Includes worldwide revenues. So this is worldwide, so I guess that makes up for it a little bit. I bet you at least 50% of that bar on the left there, which would be the Fire Emblem bar, is Japan. Probably. That, that game is apparently way more popular in Japan than it is here. That's why we're getting another fucking Fire Emblem character. <laughs> yep, there you did, go. Have we, did we talk about that last week? We did. We, we did. did. We hinted yeah. at it. Yeah. yeah. Bring the total up to uh, like eight? seven or eight Fire eight? Emblem eight? characters eight? now. So, <laughs> How big's the number eight, really? Like, when you think about it... It's 656 <laughs> million big, apparently. Uh, but going to the next game doesn't even hold a candle to it. So, from 656 million from Fire Emblems to 131 million to Animal Crossing Pocket Camp... I loved Animal Crossing, and I spent money on Pocket Camp, but it got real old real fast. I didn't even know there was an Animal Crossing mobile game. I'm not gonna lie. It's 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 not yeah. It's not it's not regular Animal Crossing. Yeah, when you add microtransactions to Animal Crossing, it immediately becomes a terrible, mean game. Because when you pay sixty dollars for an Animal Crossing, you can indefinitely do whatever forever, with that sixty dollars that you put in. When you download a free copy of Animal Crossing. But you can only catch one fish a day. <laughs> it's kind of like that. You met your quota. Sorry, go renew your fishing license. Uh, there's leaf get... tickets. Uh, you can only build certain things a day. You can only acquire certain things within a certain <laughs> amount of time. And in order to be able to do more in that time, you got to spend real-world money. So it's like that long, never-ending grind, or pay a lot of money to have it all right now. <laughs> and then grind, once you get, get it all right, right then, what the fuck is the point? That's what the vast majority of like the mobile games kind of do, is like, Usually they'll start you off with like, oh look, here's a bunch the of... The freemium thing. Yeah, the freemium thing. It's like, here's a bunch of cool stuff. Yeah, look, you look, we boosted you all the way up to here. And it's like, bam, you hit a wall. And it's like, it might take you a week to get over that wall. Or you could just, I don't know, maybe $40? $40? Come on, man. Yeah. That'll, that'll bless but you. But I'm a firm believer, like, if I have a free-to-play game, that's fine to add microtransactions. But if I can have a free-to-play game and I can pay 60 bucks. And not have basically everything that would almost make it a full retail title that's shady as fuck and doesn't need to exist. <laughs> yeah. So if I download Pocket Camp and I spend 60 bucks and I can't fucking do everything that I would want to do, that's ridiculous. Yeah. The, the worst ones are uh, like the ones that do that, what you just said, but then they have like a subscription model or something thing as well. Like... I know the fucking I know the big top tier mobile games like your Clash of Clans and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, you can just straight up buy your gems or whatever the fuck right out the bat. But you can also do like a fifteen dollar subscription plan thing a month where it's like, you get these many more additional units or this many more whatever base upgrades or it's like, God, they are just they just got it down to a system of just yeah. raking in people's money. So, and some people just don't get it and they don't understand what they're doing. I mean, because gambling is. Not only, I, I think this is gambling, I, you know, especially with oh, certain, yeah, yeah, certain yeah, yeah. aspects, like with the Fire Emblem, that's gambling. When you pay money and you're not sure of the outcome and it can be risk or reward, there you go. That's 
It's, no, that's how, like, yeah, that's, that's the that's, definition of gambling. Well, that's how they get you. Is like usually with games like those, like the gotcha games. It's like you have like the whatever it is, like scrolls or portals or whatever the fuck to unlock the characters. It's like you got your common tier, your uncommon tier, your rare, your legendary, your whatever the fuck. And it's like, oh, you use this scroll, you have like a five percent chance to get this epic hero, whatever Roy or whatever the fuck. And it's like. But if you slide like $10 our way, it's a guaranteed epic. I know? did play a gotcha game. I forgot about this. Final Fantasy Mobius. I think that's what it was called. Because it had a tight end promotion for 14 at one point, And I've seen it on the Mog Station. So I downloaded it. And goddamn, if I didn't try my hardest, I think I put money into it. Never really played it. But I put money into it trying to obtain uh, Yastola, Yida, in my, my Mobius. I think it's Mobius. Something like that. But yeah, it's like one of those. Mm-hmm. Literally looks pretty identical to uh, Fire Emblem Heroes, but yep, that's what they do. So they get you with the the uh, fan loyalty, and then they got gotcha. you. Um, I don't even know what this next game is, but next on the list, so from 131 million to 123 million, Dragalia Lost. Is that that GameCube game that was really popular? Skies of Arcadia, Dragalia. I don't know. Beat you know me. what I'm talking about? Skies of Arcadia. Never mind. Gener- uh, generic JRPG thing, probably. Yeah, I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, Mario Kart Tour brings it t- way, uh, quite a bit lower, actually, with 86 million. I like how we're saying low and stuff, and we're just like dropping this, millions yeah, beside like, it. There's more money than people will see in their life. Just it, yeah, million. Little yeah. fucking phone app. But it was free that people spent this much money on. Um, I don't fuck on Mario Kart. What the fuck? I don't know how people spent 76... Uh, is that a six? Yeah. 76 million on Super Mario Run. I don't even know. Is that just one of those auto runners where you have lives and levels just auto-generate and you gotta make them through them? Beats me. I played the first one and it was like... Or the first level or two and it was just like, hey, if you want to continue playing this, uh, buy the full version for $10. And I was like... No, I will not. I will not do that. And bringing up the ass end of this whole thing, Mario, uh, Doctor Mario World with four point eight million. Oddly so enough, a sliver, quite a, quite yeah, a little yeah. bit of sliver compared to the other ones. <laughs> yeah, six hundred fifty-six million, all the way down to four point eight million. Wild, but so that's the one I played the most of. <laughs> weird, and it's probably the most I put the most money into, because I paid money to actually unlock characters. I was really into the the multiplayer of that when it first came out. I don't know why. I was I was a big Dr. Mario fan back in the day. So when it was free, I was like, hell yeah. And then I did multiplayer. And then they had those characters where they had attributes. And it was like, okay, well, I have the basic three free ones. And then mm-hmm. I played up against a fucking, I don't know, a Goomba over <laughs> here. And he has the ultimate ability of like, hey, hit three combos in a row. Automatically drop 400 rocks on the other side. And I'm like, well, goddamn, I want that. <laughs> but then... Well, I, want, I want that. <laughs> but then you go into the menu and... Of course, you can't just buy them. So it's the box thing. Oh, it's a loot box thing? Yeah. yeah so you pay like five bucks per character, roll the dice, and I got shitty people. I mean, I got some that was okay, but I swear there was like that one character if you ever went up against, it was just like, boy, you better, you better fucking <laughs> you get better it. Just, just bend over. Because as soon, yeah, you better slap your fucking combos down because if you don't, all they got to do is just slowly but surely get their like three stack or whatever. And like, this is your whole side this is, is done. This, this is your whole I side is done. I got six pills lined up, and you're done. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Meanwhile, you're like there, there, oh, all of them. Bro, My whole side's clear. Tetris, double Tetris. God. My whole side's clear. My whole. Why isn't he dead? Yeah, didn't matter. Me and Graham uh, played quite a bit of Doctor Mario at uh, Zach Busby's house. Believe it or not. Growing up. Yeah. Well, not. I mean, not growing up. A, a few times. We played it. You know, it was Doctor Mario. It's Tetris, but with pills. Yeah, I, I really loved it. I had it on the Game Boy. Holy shit. Random tangent. Um, Kim's family is cleaning out a hoarder's house. You know, uh, they, someone's going to move into a new house and it's filled with a bunch of shit. But her mom was cleaning it for, you know, her sister or whatever. And they found a bunch of cool stuff. So they gave me a old school PS2 with all the oh. cables. And it, it, looks, it looks okay. It's just covered in just hoarder mess. So I kind of want to disinfect it. God knows what the hell's in it. Rat shit. Yeah, it looks rough on the outside. But uh, I wonder what game's in it. That, that is something I do wonder. Um, but the best part, she handed me a Game Boy original case with a Game Boy in it, intact, looks perfect. 
No smoke damage. Doesn't look like it was discolored or anything. Looks like that perfect gray on it. Mm. And like seven games, all with manuals. She said she threw out the boxes. And I was oh, like, no. oh my god, why? Oh no. I would have had seven Game Boy original games with case and manuals. Is that worth? Is that worth something? I it, to me, it would have been. I don't care what it. I don't care like actual value. I would have been happy to have some original Game Boy cases. Um, I got Super Mario Land. Um, I know I got a Castlevania game. I can't remember any of those. Those were the big ones. But it came in a nice little case, and they all they were all in uh, little plastic snap cartridges. Nice. So they're covered mm-hmm. in everything. I remember, I remember them. So that's what I remember playing. Um, Doctor Mario. Doctor Mario on was the old school Game Boy where you had to adjust the that green. Yeah. That green. I don't know what the hell you call it. The gamma values yeah, or whatever. Yeah, the fuck. either darkened or brightened the screen to to nobody's business. But uh, yeah. That's a cool little number crunch, man. Um, Nintendo making money off of IPs that they knew they could make money off of. So, there's that. Let me dip out of this uh, Twitch chat thing real quick so it's not distracting me. There's a dog barking. There is a dog barking. Who does that? Sorry for the abrupt abrupt audio cut. We try. There's only so much you can do when you live in a household with other people that have different life schedules. So, there's that. Um, Anyway... I guess moving on down the news that we're going to stick with the Nintendo thing because I think this is the biggest news of the of the week. Uh, Pokemon Home finally got its um, what you call it? I guess it is a subscription model detailed and all that good jazz. Finally got some deets on it. Yeah. So this is for all you uh, good old Pokemon Sword and Shield fanatics. Um, as everyone knows. There, I'm, I'm sure everybody that fucking pays attention to Pokemon knows that there's, what is it, Pokemon Bank that's been sitting in limbo from the 3 ds forever. Yeah, I remember. I, I probably have some Pokemon stored on the Pokemon Bank from forever ago, but now with a new iteration of Pokemon and with a whole new console, they're going to have to have a whole new way to do it all because you can't just. What the hell is the point of Pokemon? Bank. I, don't even, I don't even know what Pokemon Bank did. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, you could do, you could upload your Pokemon Sun, Moon, Shield. Not Shield. Uh, Sun, Moon, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. X Y. Were there 3DS games? Yeah, I think there were. Okay, okay then probably so. But anyway, now we're moving on to the next generation. So everyone's, of course, wanting that uh, that feature of bringing your old Pokemon to your newer games. If they're compatible. If they're compatible, yeah, of course. This has been a thing that used to be a no-brainer. You know, it used to be a link cable. What a bang. There you go. Yep. And then I think from what? Once we moved to the GBA to the DS is when it started getting complicated. That's when you had to actually move all your old Game Boy cartridges to a Game Boy Advance cartridge and then take a Game Boy Advance cartridge and put it in the bottom of an original DS. And then... Oh, yeah, with the... With the, uh, the Pokemon Park transfer. Yeah. And then you could transfer them from the likes of... God damn, do people actually go through that? I did. I did a did couple. You take a Game Boy? Yeah. Pokemon? Well, no, I didn't go that far back, but I did take a, like, a, I think I had an Emerald cartridge or something like that. Like, you, took, you went from GBA to DS? Yeah. I didn't see that. That didn't seem as bad as going from, like, fucking blue to whatever. But see, I, I think it lacks everything that would make it special because every time you move them up the game edits your Pokemon anyway because stats weren't the same back then and moves weren't the same back then either so with every generational hop you you start losing and or gaining random shit towards your Pokemon right but anyway Pokemon Home this is supposed to be the new Pokebank the new Pokepark the new transfer system Nintendo needs more of your money they got the, they got a Switch Pro they need to find so Cash in your Animal Crossing new leaf. <laughs> your real life debt. Yeah. <laughs> if only. Um, the only pros that I really see about this um, is that one, that there is a free model, I guess, known as Basic. We'll get to, to the tier list here in a second. Um, other than there being a Basic is that it doesn't require Nintendo Switch Online. So you do not have to actively have a Nintendo Online subscription. 
That's a, that's a different subscription. That is a different subscription. So you don't need a subscription for this subscription because they don't want to... Well, they're just going to reinvent cable. <laughs> yeah. So they don't want to double charge you or have a double paywall, which, honestly, if you're playing Pokemon online anyway, you're probably going to have... It's it's few and far between are the people that are not going to pay for Nintendo Switch online and not have the premium service. The people that have one or the other are either kids that have no choice in the matter and really just want to trade some Pokemon. Or you got the diehard Pokemon fans that are like, I need that premium service. Yeah. So, um, that's, I mean, that's cool. I'm, I'm always a fan of not being behind a paywall for a paywall. You know? At least I get something out of it, I guess. Anyway, um, the subscription will cost $3 for a month, $5 for three months, or $16 for a year. Not terrible pricing, that, I mean... That is, that is not terrible at all. But, I mean, it's very specific for a game. Yeah. Like, how often are you... I mean, I know it's only $16 a year. That's not really, you know... That's that nothing. That is really nothing. But still, this is this is talking about a single game that you maybe... If you're a casual player, you maybe want to port... I don't know, maybe a team. Your favorite, yeah, your, your favorite Pokemons or whatever. A team that maybe on your last gen you, you won a couple your of shiny, things Your shinies Your shinies, yeah. That's probably what most people are going to do. They're going to be shiny trading. And, um... But then you got the competitive people that are like, Bro, I need my, uh, swift-natured Tyranitar with this move set over here right now. Choice scarfed out with stealth rocks. And they bring them over. Exactly. Yeah. Well, see, uh, another thing I thought about, um... With Pokemon, well, any of them, I'm not, I'm, I'm done. Uh, if you've completed your Pokedex and stuff in older games, they give you the shiny charm, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, so it'd be easier to. Uh, I don't know how Sword and Shield do shinies. Terribly, if I remember right. The new ones. Oh, what'd you say? Uh, Sword and my Shield. Bad. Sorry, I just immediately thought of X and Y and had PTSD about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> But I don't know if if they do them any differently. But I was kind of thinking it, I mean, I, maybe I it would be easier to go back into your older games that you already have, uh, you know, your shiny charm or whatever for, and be able to farm for shinies in that game, and then port them to your Pokemon, your, your Poke Poke Home, Pokemon Home. I had, to, I had to read it again yeah, because I don't yeah. know whether it's Poke Park, Poke Bank, Poke Home. It's not a Poke House. It's, it's not Poke Hauntus. It's, it's a Poke Home. John Smith, where you at? And then John Smith. Something I think like so. That. Uh, but. So maybe there's there's something in that, but well, we, we, you were gonna say something. That that was. Uh, oh. oh, I think uh, <laughs> shiny farming and sword and shield. I think there's a strat to it or something that lessens the uh, percentage or increases the percentage of catching them now. So similar to like, there was supposed to be ago. something like that in uh, Let's, Let's go. go, but I'll tell you, did not work for me. I had the shiny charm and all, and I had chains going. Yeah, no. I, uh, it was awful. I remember uh, I farmed for a couple of hours with the charm, with the chain going. I can't remember which Pokemon I was going for. But I think it, did, it didn't matter. As long as you had a chain going, it didn't matter. Shinies were more likely to appear regardless. And uh, the first shiny I seen was a Pidgey. And I was like... Some dull brown fucking... Man, I do not give a shit. And I got so mad, and I honestly think I just stopped playing. Right. That was it. I didn't, you know, I didn't call it 151 Pokemon. I even got the Mel Tans rated to me. Whatever. Nice. Doesn't matter. Nice. And, yeah. But, here we are now. New age, new people. So, let's let's break down the basic to the premium Pokemon Home subscription service. Okay, so, moving Pokemon from the Pokemon Bank. So, I guess that's from the bank to your new game, which would be Sword and Shield, is absolutely unavailable <laughs> for for the basic people, so Get shit on. Yeah, so you you're gonna have to pay at least three dollars to move them Oof. from your old to yeah to your new game. Um, number of Pokemon that can be deposited into the bank. So under the basic tier, you can deposit up to thirty, and with the premium, you can deposit up to six thousand. Like I don't even know what's going on with this number. <laughs> like who is doing this? It's quite a uh, disparity. Is that a is that a keyboard error? There was supposed to be an extra zero. <laughs> Two extra zeros, in fact. <laughs> On the basic side, probably because yeah. Jesus, thirty to six thousand Pokemon chilling. And how long would that take to transfer? 
What bro. kind of transfer are we talking about? I don't know. Um, number of Pokemon that can be placed in a Wonder Box at one time. The basic is three, and the premium is ten. Don't know what a Wonder Box is? I don't know what a Wonder Box is either. So, apparently, it's a third of it on the basic side, so... And a lot I, better than 30 versus 66,000. <laughs> yeah, at least the numbers are a bit better. Yeah. Um, now, apparently the GTS, the Global Trading System, or whatever it was called, I remember that being a thing in yeah. Yeah, earlier 3DS the titles. Wonder, Wonder Trades and shit. Yeah. Um, that's making a comeback? I thought um, that wasn't making a comeback. I could have swore they said that at some point, that there was not going to be that random GTS thing. But, alas, here we are with the number that can be placed in the GTS under no payment is one for the basic and three for the premium. This numbers are getting closer and closer together. Yeah, I, I, I do think that 6,000 is an error on someone's behalf. <laughs> uh, room trade, which I'm guessing is going to be like a lobby. Uh, they already have kind of like a little bit of overworld interaction in Sword and Shield. Right. So I'm guessing room trade is going to be where there's a lobby and you can walk around and everybody can see what everybody has and see if you want to... Hey, I'll boast with it. That yeah, it's, seems... like the, it's like the farmer's market of the Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. that kind of seems like what OG Pokemon used to be like. Remember going to school? Oh, what's, yeah. your, what's your Pokemon yeah, yeah. cart? Well, and that's, uh, that's like, what room trading used bro, to be. Bro, I got be. a Golem here. It's got self-destruct. Who want a Golem with self-destruct? <laughs> I know you do. Give me that right you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, that's the way Pokemon used to be, man. You go to a literal physical room Bring with your cart. Te- teachers back then must have been like... And dude, it's got are, they ta- are they talking about drugs? Bro, I got that sticky, icky, honeydew lemon drop. Give me that AK-47 Kush. Here's some blue Frankenstein. Oh, man. I got a mild-natured... <laughs> yeah. I got a mild-natured Jolteon here. She'll give you the par- paralysis for, for sure, for, for days. What you got for me? Bro, I got the burns, homie, man. It's Flareon <laughs> shit right here, Doc. Flareon for days. This shit loud as hell, don't yeah. <laughs> um, Anyway, yeah, that's room a, that's, trading. That's a loud run. What's, what's his name? Oh, the, the, X, X loud. Yeah, the one with the, the yeah, curly the, ears. Yeah, looks like that's ah, the, he's got, he X loud. X loud, something like that, right? Um, room trading, which, like, like I said, I guess it's like a lobby where you can go around and participate with everyone and trade with individuals you've never interacted with before. So a little bit of random trading in there. Um, with basic, you can only participate. You cannot host. Uh, with premium, you can host and participate. Of course, why else wouldn't you? So I guess you could set up a lobby and invite a bunch of people and see what everyone has to offer. Like you said, a little farmer's market. Yeah. Everyone comes into the lobby, stands around. Oh, man, I got some good magic off the sale. You know, everybody's just going to be hoarding, hoarding out their dittos. Like, bro, I got a five, five EV fucking ditto right here. Yeah, really? <laughs> Calm nature. And uh, judge function. I don't see much appeal in this, but I'm sure some people do. The ability, uh, you can you can basically see people's stats and uh, give them comments on them. You know, okay. EVs and natures and stuff like that. All right. Something, you know. Bleed, bleed the service, man. you got to give Might them. Well, give, yeah. yeah. Sprinkle in a little, little yeah. extra stuff on So So um, you won't be able to do that under the basic. You'll have to pay to do that. Um I don't know how I feel about this. Doesn't affect me. I know it didn't affect you. It didn't affect me either, but you take it I don't it. I don't like the way they're dealing with Pokemon nowadays. Because not only is is this another fucking payment thing, they got DLC now, and most of the Pokemon that you would want to port from your old games aren't even available in the game now. Well you gotta stay relevant, you gotta stay new, you gotta you know So in order to say like I want some Pokemon from two gens ago. There's a random selection in the new games now, right? A cut list, you know? Mm. So, if they're not available, then you're basically going to have to wait for another update. Because this is what it seems like they're doing. It seems like they've split the decks and they're selling it back to you. Online services. Online services. <laughs> Were you doing a gym? Yeah. yeah. Online these, services. These, these Pokemon aren't available in patch 2.01, but they will be available in patch 2.0312-6. Yep. So with our with our next uh, DLC, we'll get a whole a whole new roster of the national decks, and then I'm sure from then on we'll get nothing but more Pokemon from the national decks, and eventually the Pokemon Home 
which is what this is called, will be relevant. You'll eventually be able to move all your Pokemon from every different game to this game, which is how it should have been from the fucking start. There shouldn't have been two different... Pokemon Bank should be working with this somehow. I shouldn't have to buy Pokemon Home. I don't know. People sleep on Kangaskhan. But that, pro- that Pokemon pretty goddamn high. I don't think they sleep on them. I remember that being like a, a thing in pro tournaments a couple of years ago. It's, it's a pretty good Pokemon, but it always slips under the cracks. Everybody just goes to the, your, your Ubers and your near Ubers. Do you remember the, the episode with Kangaskhan in it? No. The poachers? Yes, actually, now I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, they literally just threw their kid out of a fucking plane window. <laughs> it, po- Pokemon used to be about something. Yeah. Like he said, Titan. look at it, look at it, kid, look at it. And he held him out of a fucking plane or some shit. <laughs> and he just dropped him. Cartoons was heavy back then, though. You remember the old he got, school, rain- uh... he got raised by a family of Genghis Khan. <laughs> I don't even know how to say Genghis Khan. Is it Genghis Khan K- or K- Kangas Khan? Kangastan. Kangastan? Yeah, it's a K. K-H. Angastan. Ang- K- what? Kangastan. Kangastan? Kangastan. It's almost like a Middle Eastern capital. Kangastan. Kazakhstan. Kangastan. Kangaskhan. Kang- yeah. Yeah, no. Oh, I'm going to pause it. I'm pausing damn it. God we'll damn right it. Back. All right. Yeah, Sorry. We're back. We're back. Yeah, I just had to. I... First pause this whole recording session. <laughs> you, you wish. Yeah. <laughs> it's Kangaskhan. So it is like the. That's the... what we started out saying, but then I started doubting myself. <laughs> I don't know. Say something over and over again. It's like yeah, oh yeah, this are, is, it becomes yeah. yeah. What are words? They're all made up. Um yeah, not a fan of monetization. Monetization in the Pokemon. Game. Monetization. 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 Yeah. DLC and now we got a subscription service for a bank to carry over Pokemon that you can't even catch most of them in your new game. I'm a fan. Not really. I know you said it didn't affect you, but you you, you got to have an opinion on it. You say you want a Switch for Sword and Shield. Nah, that's, that ship is sealed. I'm throwing it out. Really? Yeah. It's over. It's hype, hype train has died down. <laughs> Two weeks later? Left the station. <laughs> Two weeks later? Yeah. That's over. All right. Well, um, that about wraps it up for the news. Uh, I think Pokemon, I mean, Nintendo, really held the reins this week. Interesting. Yeah. They make They make Ugh. money, and then they make ideas that make money. There you go. No one likes this Pokemon home Scott, shenanigans. What's Scott the Waz thinks of that? He hasn't made a video in a minute. Um, no. Yeah. Anyway, I guess we'll move on to what we care about. This is the games that are coming out this week or maybe a couple of days ago because I was late on the podcast this week. But these are the games that we care about, not everything that's coming out. Just the ones that I think are noteworthy and we can talk about. There's a game coming out on the Switch called Prison Princess. You need more emphasis. Try it again. There's a game coming out on the Switch called Prison Princess. Oh, right. Hell yeah. It's rated um, T for teen. I think it's coming out tomorrow, the 30th. Okay. Tell us about it. It's, it's rated T for teen. But, I don't believe it is. But, essentially, you play as a ghost. Presumably male. And no, 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 no. Don't you him, her, she, him. A ghost. He's a non-gender. You play he as is it. gender fluid. All right, so it you ch- you play as a gender fluid ghost, okay? Play as a gender fluid ghost, and you help two princesses escape a prison. Prince I, sure. I don't know. And then you, it's just, it's a puzzle game, quote unquote. It's an upskirt simulator. Okay, so I was gonna stop you there. You don't care about this game at all, do you? No, not really. I don't. Had some good visuals. Yeah. So we watched a trailer for, you know, we, we normally dive down into these games. And this one caught your eye. Why did this one catch your eye, buddy? Is that an anime women in it? Anime women. They were, they were some fine looking anime women. Yes. See, what are we at? Uh, an hour and 18? I'm safe. Kim barely watches these. I doubt she makes it to an hour and 18. <laughs> okay. Am I a bad boyfriend? No. For saying things like that? No. Oh, uh, no. There were some fine, uh, lewd anime chicks. Yes. In terms, um, of, in terms of anime princesses, they could rock my castle. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what the hell was going on. One was locked in a dungeon and the ghost was there to help him escape, I think. Another one was playing Simon Says and her ass was right in her face. Or the ghost's face. So. Our face. Our, yeah. We're ghosts. We're all good. Whatever. My, ma- my main point being, it was really tea. And like, those women had fucking boobs bigger than like most porn stars and 
fucking bulges of vaginas just like just there, just detailed. And yeah, yeah, like, yeah. She was yeah. There was uh, those panty was, lines was, yeah, were they were they were, they very, were hugging man. Yeah, and so. she was bent over. That shit was sticking the fuck out. So that shit was that shit had to be like T for teen. Knocking on the door of M for mature. Like, yeah, because I really didn't. I knew there wasn't nudity in it, but when we uh, looked back on the uh, <laughs> the switch page, it said T for teen. Um, I mean, we started off the trailer, and like literally the first thing we saw was a big-breasted, scantily clad princess bound to a wall with chains, and her panties showing, and it's just like I'm sold. Speaking in that, I know it's Japanese, but like that panting, high pitched. Oh yeah, there was. Some if there was no dialogue, if there was no subtitles, man, it was a hentai. Yeah, there was you some. Know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> baka. <laughs> you goddamn baka. And it was just, man, yeah. I don't know why that made the list. So just what? because it was lewd anime women, I think, is because it made the list. If you want to have an adventure and just escape reality for a day, get some headphones. Get a uh, prison princess, yep. prison princesses on Switch. Just go nuts, man. Literally. Yeah. Please have a lock and a door. <laughs> yes. Those are the two things. I, there's no peripherals needed. One of our hosts. Lock and a one door. of our hosts could learn a thing or two from from that. Yeah, from I, that. I absolutely could. That's what I care about. Nice. Yeah. Um, moving on down the list. Warcraft Reforged um, was a big name for a lot of the people in my Discord, actually. Um, I never... I wasn't into PC life back then. I, I could really wow. give or take... RuneScape Rider die, baby. Really. That's honestly... My yeah. fucking old-ass shit could run that. I was good with it. Woodcutting level 99. Really? Yeah. See me at the Rock selling that shit on the Grand Exchange, baby. Mm-hmm. You got your skill kit? No. Nah, it's members only. That's rough. That is rough. Yeah, Five dollars is a lot of money. When you a kid. Ever tell you how I made it through that? Through Take the it. membership? Yeah. Um, back in the day, they had some weird-ass payment options, and I had a... Uh, <laughs> destroy me, internet. I don't care. I had an Obama phone, if that's what you want to call them. Um, <laughs> Welfare phone? Yeah. I used to have one of them, too. Basically, they had a pay-by-SMS option. Oh, you pay by the minute? Yeah. Hell yeah. Basically, um, well, there was some weird thing on the Obama phones, welfare phones, whatever you want to call them, um, where you could just get more minutes for no fucking reason. You text 255 to whatever. Anyway, I used to do that all the time, and you'd give you 500 free minutes. So uh, I went to RuneScape one day, and I was like, I wonder if this works. So I went to pay by SMS, and I typed in my phone number. It took all my 500 minutes, which was worth a month's worth of minutes. And it paid for my membership for the month. Bro, that is hype. And then I typed in 255 to whatever the fuck I used to do that to, and he gave me 500 minutes back. And I had my phone and a RuneScape membership. Nice. nice. <laughs> and I was so lost. I had no idea what to do. There was like capture the flag and some type of PvP options. I didn't oh, know yeah, was, like Clan Wars. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, man. But that was... Or cast, was. Castle Wars. Castle, yeah. I yeah think that sounds right. Yeah, Clan Wars sounds like a, like a racial thing. <laughs> It does. <laughs> we do not condone that yeah, in any way. Yeah, don't you yeah, don't don't do don't do any clan wars. That's probably bad. Oh man. Castle wars is what it was. Yeah. yeah everybody used to get jester hats and stuff. You had like cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking yeah, party hats and stuff. Yeah, man, that stuff. was cool. Now uh, I remember like having to beg my parents to like give me a membership. I, I I had it a few times, I just never like There was only one or it. two stores around here that sold like the cards. They used to have cards, but we we lived in a shitty neighborhood for any technological advances in fucking society. But like this will this will kind of show you like probably only got (laughs) this will show you the difference in time, I guess. Like it was like middle school era, like what twelve years ago, maybe. It was like I remember asking my mom, like, "Hey, can I get a RuneScape membership? It'll allow me to do all this crazy cool stuff, video game things." But it's like, how much is it? Five dollars. All you gotta do is use your credit card. No, I don't trust the internet. I don't trust the oh, internet yeah. with my credit card. I don't trust the internet with my credit card. And now it's just like, pfft. need my credit card info. There you go. Cheers. Have it. Take it. That is what it's like, though. Everybody does. Yeah, everybody. Does. Ten years ago, nobody wanted to put shit anywhere. I don't trust the internet. Blah, blah, blah. Now everybody has wiretaps in their house. Yeah, what's that meme? It was like 1990s. Don't talk to strangers online. Modern day. Hey, I, uh, can you give me a ride to my house? Bring me stranger? food. <laughs> Stranger, strange man that has three and a half stars. Please 
I you require know, just know, that it's... You know my address, location, and everything about me. It's a wild time. The future is now. But, uh... Warcraft Reforged. Uh, did you ever play any of them? No. 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 You played Starcraft at all, right? Uh, like a few... A handful of times. It's not, basically, uh... Not great at it. Yeah, me either. Uh, I thought I was until I got to, like, the end game of, like, Starcraft. Big shout out to uh, Jesse and Homebred, who I think are diamond players on StarCraft too, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. Yeah, that's that's big dick deadly status. That is. It's like I was like I said, uh I made it to like the end game of it and thought, thought I was big dick deadly. But that game has that, that learning curve to where like basically the, re- the 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 start of the game is just teaching you shit. Talk about Warcraft or Starcraft? Starcraft. I never played <laughs> Warcraft. Um but once you get to the end, and you have like all three factions going at it, good fucking luck. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck micromanaging your team while two other teams are already doing the same thing, exploring the map, while I'm literally just getting enough resources to build whatever the fuck. Yeah, I can't, say, I, I, I can't get into that. Yeah. I like it. I really I have a fun time with it, but my rage factor for shit like that is off the charts. I got I got so mad at StarCraft. That's why I do not play that because it, it it takes a fucking chunk of your mind when you spend thirty minutes building a base only for you to try to do something <laughs> just for like it, just, yeah yeah, yeah just, just to demolished. get completely obliterated and have to start it all over again and none of it meant anything. Yeah, see, I get we all got into a like a command and conquer kick there for a while on three sixty days. And that's when I that's when I realized like RTSs just aren't for me. Yeah. Like everybody, you know, everybody plays the RTSs like they're on fucking crack or something, right? Like set this, do that, do this macro here, set that person over there, harvest those resources. I'm like on the opposite end where I'm like, I like to watch the things do the things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh look at that harvester go. Look at those animations. He's doing that. Oh, these guys are fighting over here. I want to let me watch this battle. And it's like that shit. That shit don't matter. Just click shit. Do things. Build stuff. So. Work for me the right way, but then it never does. Yeah. But uh, this is a reskin. I want to call it that. I guess um, it's a HD, more or less remake from a 2002 Warcraft game. So um, a lot of my uh, this is what uh, World of Warcraft is based off of. Yeah. A lot of people do, actually. A lot of people do not know that World of Warcraft came from <laughs> Warcraft, which was a wow strategy really game. yeah man. Because anytime you bring up just if you just say the word. Warcraft, everyone immediately thinks Bo. World me. of Warcraft. So, Actually, I don't remember which one it is. One, two, or three. But uh, the Lich King, which was the uh, second, second one of the expansions from yeah, for World, World of Warcraft, uh, he was actually a playable character in one of the Warcraft games. You actually got to see his like prequel lore upbringing type deal. So. A lot of lore behind it. Not that, not that good stuff, so. More power but, tool? Yeah, but it's cool to see... Um, I know Blizzard is a big company, but... And I know that their Warcraft stuff was predominantly their bigger thing before World of Warcraft took over what would be... What the fuck they were known for, that and uh, Diablo. Right. Um, but it's cool to see them give attention to uh, a fan, fa- uh, fan favorite, old school classic stuff. Like I said, um, a lot of the people at my Discord, they, they hopped on that shit and I... I, like the fool I am, I was like, oh shit, what, what's happening in World of Warcraft? And he was like, oh man, there's new Warcraft coming out. And I'm like, oh hell yeah, what what are you? And he's like, no, no, it's no, Warcraft. It's, and no, I'm no, like, no, oh, no. Yeah. fuck, I'm out of my element, dog. And so, I, I knew that it was a uh, real-time strategy thing, but I didn't, as hype as they were getting for it, I thought it was going to be that's... an MMO expansion. Because when people get hyped for shit like that, I'm like, damn, you're hyped for a, a remake game? from a... A 2002 RTS. That's well, you know, to them, that's that's probably like their RuneScape or whatever. Yeah, that's their nostalgia glasses, but yeah. it's getting revamped, so that's cool. So, uh, shout out to uh, Blizzard to yeah. actually do something that's not. Hope they don't get the coronavirus. Fucking with China. So <laughs> there's that. 2020 got a new, new virus. virus yeah. yeah, got a new plague. So, uh, but I don't drink Corona, so we're okay. <laughs> okay. We're more of a uh, Miller High Life type over here. I think I got a, I got a Wicked's here. Mm-hmm. Thanks. I mean, we'll just say light is coarse light all day, pretty much every day. It's a good goddamn beer. Um, this one was a surprise and wasn't actually on my news site. So the you know fact that you know it's not a good beer, Voodoo Ranger. No, those are I, I don't like IPAs. Yeah, so 
if you're a, if you're a Voodoo Ranger fan, I hate to tell you, but IPAs can choke on a dick. As far as I'm concerned, IPAs are the worst type of beers. Yeah, but you're... I used to think that oh man, these are craft beers, man. People, there's there's got to be an IPA out there for me. Right? Because everyone's just like, man, IPAs, IPAs. Oh, this one particular thing, oh, man. And then, like, every IPA tastes like the ass end, <laughs> the ass end of a fucking just shit-soaked boot. <laughs> yeah. You know? It's you're like not, you're it, not It's wrong. like you stepped in shit and you soaked it in a fucking dishwasher for, like, four hours and then you drink the water that became of that. And you're like, man, this has some interesting taste. And then you finish swallowing and you go, yeah, that's, that's, see, that's. <sighs> and you're like, man, that tastes like shit. That's my whole deal with them is, like, any IPA you take, like, doesn't matter. Voodoo. I thought Samuel Adams at one point. I was like, this no, can't be no, bad. No, this no, can't no. be bad. Everyone loves Samuel Adams. Like, they're custom brews or whatever. Yeah. And I remember I went to a, uh, I was at a concert one time, and uh, all their taps were tapped out. Remember that shit? I think you were there. It was the Coheed concert with Taking Back Sunday. All their taps were tapped. And, like, the last thing they had was... Oh, the uh, Charlotte show? I think so. No, I just remember the big pink drinks. And mm-hmm. uh, I was in line, and I was buying everybody with the last ass bit of my money. I had to get, like... It wasn't sweet water because that's a different thing, but it was some fucking weird Oktoberfest, weird ass IPA Samuel Adams I, thing. Wait, I think I do remember that now. And I was like, this is the only thing they had in the taps left at the line I stood it. Because I wasn't about to stand in four different lines right. for fucking beer, you know? And I'm like, I'm like, what do you guys got left? You got any PBR? No. Nope. Yeah, all the cheap beer was gone, so I was like, all right, so you're paying yeah, the $8. Good beer. All the good beer was gone. <laughs> well, all the fucking shit that wasn't $8. So yeah, I bought everybody like a fucking. Here's an eight dollar pint. Here's an eight dollar pint, and everyone's like, "This is awful." And I'm like, "I don't know." What to tell I, don't know. You. I don't know. What to tell you. This is the last thing I had in line. I'm not waiting twenty minutes. The no, show's no. starting soon. That's a good summary of every IPA ever. That was like, sip, man. That actually tastes pretty. Oh no, nope, there's the aftertaste. There yeah. it is. It's just like a little bit of soap. sweaty, hoppy. Froth. There's some taste. Dawn dishwashing liquid in the bottom of that. Right. Did they finish rinsing this? I don't know. That's the beauty of it. Oops. Can't tell if it's the beer or the chemicals I like they use to clean the glass. I like to taste the hops and the other shit. In. <laughs> you guys got a natty daddy in that fridge? <laughs> Shout no. out to, uh, what's that guy's name? Caleb Francis? <laughs> Caleb Francis. <laughs> <That is laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> that, is, that is absolutely his name. <sighs> That's, uh, that, that's that, two, was, that was his name? Two for two. Two for two this podcast. Yeah. I was wrong. It's Caleb Francis. God damn, that was funny. Sorry, you it's guys. good video. Me. Caleb Francis, Facebook. Look it up. Beer Drinkers, I believe is the name I think of the he video. Was on, he was on, uh, was it Vine early on? Oh, was he one of uh, the yeah. Vine starters? Yeah. People know who he is once they look him up. Because I guarantee you've seen his videos. Um, Not to be confused with Caleb City, but he is also hilarious. Oh, yeah. Caleb City. Uh, I'm, man, if you had to choose one. It's got to be Caleb City. I don't know. Between Francis and City? Yeah. I just, I know more of Caleb City stuff, so that's, yeah, I'm a little biased on that one. I feel like what I know of Caleb City isn't as funny as what I've seen of, like, four Caleb Francis videos. I see where you're coming from. And I love, I love Caleb City to death. But Francis has some of them. Just hits, hits the nail right yeah, on the head. Yeah, I, I want to explain some of them, but it's not going to do well on our podcast, so right. we'll just skip it, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, let's move on down to the game list thing. Uh, this one was supposed to... Uh, actually, no. This one did not get announced on my, my site that I get my news from. Um, this one kind of got a little under-the-radar release from PlayStation. If you're an old PC, uh, PC uh, PSP fanboy, you might remember Patapon, the rhythm-based... I don't know exactly what else I would call it. It's a rhythm-based kind of... What? What is that? A, what is it? It's, rhythm, it's a rhythm-based rhythm, game. It's a rhythm RPG game? Yeah, yeah. I guess a rhythm-based RPG game. Where you, you kind of tap... You tap to the beat. You kind of... You're like the metronome to to the characters that are moving... Bro, aren't we all just metronomes of our own... Walking to our own beat? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... We walk to the beat... Of our own drum. We go. We go. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Here Um, we go. Please don't copyright us. They might. YouTube. I played a little bit of Patapon back on the... No goddamn way YouTube would listen to an hour and a half of us talk. I think they would. (laughs) Twitch does a really good job. Facebook does too. Wow, really? Yeah, they skim. They have some software, something that skims. 
those processing things. I like to think there's somebody sitting at a computer. They're they're absolutely not, but they have something that skims audio and finds something that hits something else. Because... Well, fuck that. My my streams on Facebook copyright immediately if I have music playing. Let's just start, like, talking in pig Latin. There you go. Can't catch that. (laughs) Let's just... Record the whole stream forward, play it backwards, and then let them... Bro, let's do... Yeah, let's do the Gravity Falls things. Uh, we're going to set up a hexadecimal <laughs> system, uh, decode this. Uh, next episode, we'll have the cipher, so decrypt that and watch at your own leisure. I don't know what the fuck that was. Some Disney show. Um, anyway, you never... You you had a PSP, right? I had the first... Yeah, PSP. But you never played Patapon? No. You ever played Loco Roco? You brought up the, I, think the, I think we had the demo of it. That's the only way I know. Loco I Roco. downloaded that. That was amazing to me because it was a portable and I downloaded a demo. That was cool. Uh, but yeah, this is a, a rhythm-based RPG, like you said. There was some, uh, yeah, there's definitely some RPG mechanics in there. Uh, but like I said, you're the metronome. You kind of keep the beat going as your on-screen characters chant to the sound of their own name. Pacta, 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 Pun. Slaughter enemies Pacta, 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 and bosses that are on screen. It's pretty basic at first but after you get past the first couple of pata 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 levels um do you think that's how the drummer boys felt like back in the like they had to have revolutionary war civil war days (laughs) they absolutely had to fuck that job though right like we sit there and you're just like hey what do you do bro i play a drum and then i get shot in the sternum (laughs) i thought they were were they allowed to shoot him you weren't supposed to but i mean what the fuck that's free kills dog kdr (laughs) skyrim did you say skyrim yeah Wrong I mean, you only got one life. Like, fucking, you kill one dude, bam, you got a positive KDO or KDR. Like, shit, take out the drummer boy. If you can somehow hit the drum, at least you made a decent beat. There you go. There you go. And a, a ball of lead hitting a pigskin. A shit, box. tambourine. Anyway, um, that's cool that um. God, there's a pun there, but I can't think of it. That's cool that uh, uh PlayStation's giving the little. That, that, that's definitely like an indie title. To the PSP's life cycle, I know it it had its followers. Uh, uh, the only reason me. I actually know about this is um, I'm a huge Greg Miller fan. I talked to you about this. Greg Miller is a scumbag, piece of shit. Yeah, uh, that's your opinion. Um, I'm a huge Greg Miller fan, and uh, pretty much anything he throws out on the internet, I digest. I'm not saying that I'm a huge fan of Patapon. I know it's a big game for him, but I liked them. They were okay. I don't have a problem with them. Um, I thought it was uh, worth. We're tallying down the old notepad. I think rhythm games need to make a resurgence. It's been a minute since rhythm games have, like... They did so much in so little time that it hurt them so bad. I mean, I'm not even talking about, like, uh, like your Guitar Heroes and Rock Bands and stuff. Like, even back on, like, console things. Like, remember, like, Frequency or, like, Parappa the Rapper and, like, yeah. shit like that? Like, let's bring those kind of things back. My girlfriend does the, um, what do you call it? The, the, I feel my age when I say things like this. Uh, the TikTok. I, don't, I can't I don't, do it. It's all cringy to me. I don't understand TikTok. It's cringy. Yeah. I can't do it. The lip syncing, the music and stuff, most of it's bad. Some of it's okay. Um, so it's just like music video vines, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, one of them was doing something to Parappa the Rapper. And I was like, do you know what that is? She was like, no. And I'm like, that's, that's Parappa the Rapper. And it that was, hurts. Uh, yeah, because it was literally the uh, the driving test. <laughs> okay. Weird. We're sitting in the car. car. Yeah. And I was like, do you know what that is? She's like, no, I don't. I'm like, ah, damn. I can't, I can't deal with, uh, I'm not a big fan of musicals. I don't know if that, I think that coincides, right? I can't deal with people singing about their actions in a upbeat manner without thinking it is the cringiest shit in the world. No, you bring up a good point, because I feel the same way. I like certain movies that are musicals, but I hate the musical bits. Like, like I, I love my old Disney classics that I like, but I go back and I try to watch them and I'm like, God damn. Yeah, dude. Uh, Disney Plus, you know, it's been a thing for a minute. Bro, I went, I went back and tried to watch Nightmare Before Christmas. You know how much fucking singing that, is that in That whole Nightmare? thing is, a, yeah, it's, it's musical. God damn. Like, I watched it when I was younger and I was like, man, this movie's pretty, it's pretty banging. I try to watch it now and it's like, holy fucking shit. Can we go five minutes without a song, please? I understand the plot. Like I get it, cool movie. It's everything. It's, it's that's every uh, Disney movie. But the only one I can hold it's not every it's, Disney movie. It's pretty close to every Disney movie. Yeah. Which ones do not have musicals in them? I would argue Hercules is not a musical. 
I mean, they're not musicals, but they're life musicals. All right, so there's a, there's a difference between being a musical and having songs as montage. See, that's what, like, Hercules did or, like, Mulan did was, like, when you have, like, the montage scenes, that's when you have, like, just, like, a song. An advancement of time with a little yeah. bit of explanation behind it. But see, like, Nightmare a, Before... A Lion King did that. Yeah. yeah where, where he grew old and then they had, uh, yeah. Yeah, Hakuna Matata and shit like that. But we have, like, Frozen and Nightmare Before Christmas, like, they literally singing about what they're doing at that moment. It's like, bro, come on. We're not... Just go to Oogie Boogie. Fuck him up. Get Rescue Santa. Come on. Dude, please. Yeah. So there that is. Papaton 2. Patapon. Patapon 2. Get it. Before the Padawans come. It's actually coming out tomorrow, I think. Today. Yeah, today. Now. Yeah. Uh, sneaky little releases. Um, and, uh... <clears throat> sorry. Noises. Yeah, noises. The last bit of news on our what we care about list is Journey to the Savage Planet. I don't know how the fuck we didn't hear more about this, to be honest with you. I don't know if I'm out of the news. I feel like we're pretty up to it. I'm out of the news. I don't bring any news. Eh, I mean, you could change that if you felt like it, but it doesn't matter. Oh, I'm too busy, too busy platinum games. I you guess. are, obviously. Maybe I should just work for platinum games. Here you go. Big band out of three. See what I did there? Yeah. God, I'll make it. Vanquish. Remaster. Let's go. Um, Journey to the Savage Planet. Uh, I think it came out today, or yesterday. It came out on Tuesday. I, I hate our new schedule. I hate our new schedule. So it, I, it came out this week. Yeah, because normally, with our Monday schedule, games normally have a, a regular release window on Tuesdays or Fridays. Now, with us moving to Tuesday nights, the game will have already... A, have released that day or be coming up on Friday. Well, today I skipped Tuesday because of my long weekend. So here I am in limbo of like, is, I have this, these. This is a clusterfuck. I yeah. have these fucking notes where I'm like, this was either supposed to release on Tuesday or Friday. It's not relevant anymore. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, I know. I feel so bad. But we'll get back into it, man. It's just, a, it's, it's rough. It's just um, been, it's a weird weekend. Um, This game looks cool, actually. It almost it looks, looks like well, what No Man's Sky should have been. Should have been. A little more focused with a lot more comedy. Yeah. Um, when I first watched the trailer, I thought at least like three games came to mind. I thought Ratchet, Ratchet and Clank, um, Outer oh, Worlds, World. yep. and Rick and Morty. But then as it went on and I started seeing a little bit of gameplay, I was like, this looks this is more akin to No Man's Sky. Because there's not a lot of combat. And there's not a lot of storytelling. Mm-hmm. It's just more or less you exploring. You just explore, log some stuff. Explore with... It looked like there was some co-op or something going on. He was running around with another dude. So, But, but it, it was very... That, but everything, it was very cynical. Everything was cynical. It had that, that that narration almost. like It really reminds me of that Insomniac era from like the original yeah, the, the Ratchet, whole Ratchet and Clank thing. Where it's like... The you're nanotech. coming. You're coming up on a new planet. If you should survive this planet, then this is what you should you do. You remember the nanotech like... Oh, intros yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff, yeah. yeah. All the cutscenes from the OG Ratchet and Clanks. It, it, it literally screamed that to me. Yep. And uh, the art looked great. Um, some of the... I don't know if it, it didn't seem more... looked like exploration, but a lot of it looked linear. So it's got to be some type of progression through the planet, because it didn't seem very open-worldly, right? You know, most of the environments they've seen... It looked like yeah, they, they were kind of like moving a, straight forward through a thing. And they kind of showed like a little screenshot thing, like... Or I guess the area you would explore, and it did like seem kind of linear with like the whole the whole Avatar thing with like floating planets and everything. Avatar, that James Cameron movie, not the Last Airbender thing, to clarify. You know, there's like this little floaty area is over here, and then you kind of there's like a little bridgeway that connects in this area over here. So I can see where you're getting with the uh, linear thing. Yeah, it looked a lot linear, uh, a lot more linear than like No Man's Sky. But the exploration and the scanning of enemies and environments, learning what you're doing as opposed to learning 400 million planets, being... And being lied to. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. That's that's one thing you don't want to do to your, the people that are buying your game. But um, I, can see, I can see myself playing that kind of game. Um, Maybe it'll be on Game Pass. I would hope. It doesn't seem like a complete AAA title. Mm-hmm. Um, and that doesn't. I feel like that sounded like me shitting on it. 
but I'm not. I, I appreciate small games. Like, like fuck. We done Katana Zero not too long ago, you know? That, yeah, game, was, that game was dope. So, but a lot of the lore, like, you know how it opened up? It reminded me of the Plumbus. <laughs> yeah. Like like we said, very, very cynical, like, they had the like goo, a, they, the goo, this kind of goo. I don't yeah, remember look how. At, look at this goo. They explained this big pile of goo on the counter before it cut to the gameplay, and it was like a guy watching a trailer in the yeah, game for. Dude so, was like entering the atmosphere of the planet, and like a thing came on the screen was like, "We are required to show you this infomercial about this exploration thing." And it's like, chances are you will not survive, but if you should, start scanning the local environment, and you maybe you won't die. And it's, it's like. All right. Very full of itself. Yeah. Which is good. Very you know. very tongue in cheek uh humor. Um, yeah, that's that about wraps up uh, what we care about. Um no topics to the table this week. Are you sure? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Unless you got anything. Yep. What do you got? Jake Robertson sends in a question. Did he? Yeah. Hell yeah. What the yeah. fuck did Jake say? Did he really? Are you fucking with me? Yep. I've already read it, obviously. Yeah. So, well, this is new the, to me. This yeah, is cool. Little, this little, is a switch. Little role reversal. Uh, Jake Robertson, a.k.a. Muffinator, a.k.a. Gamma Squad Leader, says, How do you think that indie video game developers have managed to stay relevant and prevalent even against massive companies making AAA games with huge budgets? Their games are playable and they're cheap and they're fun. Yes. So, to elaborate more on the fact... I mean, you can go on, but I mean, when you... when you Automatically, when you say AAA, you're, you're thinking a AAA price point, so you're thinking 60 bucks. Yeah, right. So, they can take all the money and all the assets they can in the world and put it into this game. Years worth of R&D, everything, slapped into it. With an indie dev, I think they're, they're more on what makes a game fun and what makes it appeal to you as opposed to hey we gotta sell this shit what the fuck is gonna explode and do good Mm -hmm. so they don't have the budget but they got the mindset and if they don't have the mindset then they're not gonna be a triple a company for long so it's it's that 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 feed on hot coals if you will they 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 either stand or sit so that's that's how they thrive and most of them come out swinging um that it's always a rush to like get to like, like, push this game out this year. We need another game. My under. my first things when you when you say indie devs, I want to think back to like Drinkbox Studios, um, Guacamelee. Uh, I played that on my Vita when that first came out, and that was great because it was multi platform. Came out for everything. I could have played it on my PS4, or you know I had it on Vita, so that was cool. And it was cross save compatible. This is just shit that's that was cool for me. But being able to play that whenever, wherever, always good. And it was a full-fledged fucking game for $20. I think it was $20. It might have been 30 when it first came out. Um, uh, Drinkbox did Guacamelee. They did Severed. If I'm not mistaken, they did the Mutant Blob Attacks game as well. I could be wrong on that. But uh, a lot of those games had just ambition. They, they, they did a small form factor with what worked for gamers, man. It was like a... When you think Guacamelee... A little bit of Metroidvania, upgrady. Mm-hmm. You, know, you could upgrade your combos and go back and forth. Not a lot of people like to go here just to go back to here to get an upgrade to go break forth through here. But if you, I, do, if you do, the options are there. You yeah, know. you know there was secrets and stuff. I remember uh, getting the chickens. It was like little, was little secret chickens or something in uh, Guacamole. You could. Sorry. Sure, you're not, not thinking of Nacho Libre. Uh, I, I feel like they were probably heavily inspired. Yeah. But, right. Yeah. But that's that, that's my opinion on that. I think if you wanted to, you you wanted to dive down a bit into the question. No, my, my main point of uh, like indie developers versus like AAA developers and everything is like it's gonna sound cheesy, but like it's like a passion project yeah. to a, to a lot of them because like a lot of people don't think about the effort that goes into making games. Like when you see the credit scroll, it's like who pays attention to the credits right it's it's literally like hundreds of names so by the time the game comes out it's been like what's that fucking David Cross thing written rewritten translated Re, 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 rewritten and then, retranslated uh, from dead languages and, all by people who hadn't learned to yeah, write so yet you take something like you know just pick anything throw a dart on the board at any triple A game 
And it's like, whoever's initial idea it was at that point, by the time it came out into production, it might be close to what he had in mind, or they she had in mind, but... Close, but probably not. That's that's where the beauty of indie games lie, I think, is like, you have like... The one, vision stays closer to the original idea. Yeah, you have like, you have like one person or like a small group of people that work together and they're all like on the same wavelength and they can put out like story driven things or like maybe their game doesn't do everything all at once but they do think they do one thing and they do it well like whether it be like they tell a story or they like like in the katana zero thing we had where it's like it's like a hack and slash thing but you kind of manipulate the time and everything and they do it so well it's like that's the main selling point you know what i mean yeah so they forego like all the flashy things that make AAA games for triple, shit that AAA. specifically make a game work and what make people or, or what appeals to people. Yeah, but that's almost a godsend because being an indie dev, you know, I, I have no idea what it's like. Neither do you, you know, what it's like to actually make a game or the pressures behind it. But when you're doing an indie passion project, if you will, you. You're really just trying to do what you want to do, right? But if you're a AAA, like you said, and you have this idea, it probably goes to a, a man upstairs that goes to a storyboard. It that gets goes to rewritten. A script doctor, editor. And, and there's you know. nothing, you know, there's. Your original idea has no chance in hell of being your original idea. Yeah, because by the time it gets around to like deadlines and stuff, you're like, well, I guess that's well, close one, enough. It can't sh- even be what you want it to be because. Say you want it to be a platformer, a storytelling platformer. Well, it goes upstairs and... You're like, ah, oh, those aren't selling right Those now. aren't selling. Mm-hmm. So we'll take your original idea, we'll take your story and your plot points and your character, and we'll turn them into this. We'll turn and it by the end of it, you have a Michael Bay explosion film. Yeah, a sandbox, open world, collectible, whatever. Yeah, collectathon, and yeah, and there's a sad story to be told in there. And yeah, there's probably a guy sitting in a, a cubicle that sent that idea three floors up. Yep. And his name was four hours into a three-hour cutscene, which doesn't even make sense. But he's like, hey, they credited to me. Special thanks to my name and then a bunch of <laughs> Japanese people that actually programmed it. And right. There's nothing else I could do. But no, I think, especially nowadays, indie developers, while they might like... This is going to sound bad at first, but like, while they do seem to like flood the market with just like games constantly every week... <clears throat> there is something special about every game that yeah. comes out of them. Yeah, regardless of how shit a game is, games are art. Games will always be art to me. The shittiest game that's on the Steam Marketplace, the PlayStation Network, for God's sakes, the Nintendo Store. <laughs> you know, spot, spot the difference. Spot the difference. Someone did it, you know? Yep. May it be a big team or a large team. Someone somewhere had an idea that got pushed forth and someone put a lot of money behind it. Did it do well? Who knows? Who cares? But someone's sitting there being proud of what they did, regardless if it's shit on or not. What's that game that came out on the Steam store probably last year? Black Tiger? No. Life of Black Tiger? If you don't know what Life of Black Tiger is, look that up. It's probably the shittiest game within the decade, honestly. And it's art. It is. It's someone's project. I think one guy worked on it. Like, he literally has his... He has credit scrolled during the opening, and it's his name, his name, just his every, name. Just everywhere. Like an, old, like an old Windows Movie Maker YouTube thing. Yeah. But it's a shitty ass game. It's terrible. It's terrible. And uh, he did it himself. So, I mean, yeah, it's a bad game, but it's something someone put passion behind and did themselves. And yeah, unfortunately... Hell, no, no. It might have... <laughs> somebody might have actually liked it and maybe got them into gaming or something. You know? You never know. I don't know about Black Tiger. I don't know about it, but... We'll watch it right after this. <laughs> okay. It's pretty bad. Um, well, I want to... Yeah, thanks, Jake. Appreciate the... Appreciate the question. Yeah. Got any more? You hiding him? No, that was it. That was pretty cool. Appreciate it, buddy. Um, well, I guess that about wraps it up for, uh... For us over here at the old, uh... Snack Pack. Talking Snack Station. Um, I want to give a quick shout-out to... All my homies on Twitter. Um... The new, the new union I'm in, I guess I would call it. I don't know if it has a name. Um, Doc Lev, uh, shout out to you. Um, uh, quick shout out to uh, Uncle Monster. 
Uncle Monster, all of the Brutu uh, horde. All oh, you he, guys oh, are awesome. Oh, is he part of the Brutu horde? Yep. Okay. Uh, so Enigma, shout outs. Um, Keep that fifth edition campaign going. I'm trying to think of names, but I'm flustered. Uh, Joey, Joey P, uh, Jake, you, all of you. Appreciate the question sent in. Um, <clears throat> if you're a new listener and you've made it this far, you feel like sending in a question, I have all my links below. Feel free. Um, check me out. I've been streaming a lot more recently, trying to get that uh, path to affiliate up. Twitch.tv forward slash Sir Snack. I've been streaming Sea of Thieves, Dead by Daylight, um, open, <clears throat> open to recommendations, whatever. Uh, yeah. And this has been episode 21 of Talking Snacks. Catch you guys later.